alongside myself, Jonathan Duran. It's going to be a great game that we have for you this afternoon. North Carolina Central, they're at home. They're trying to build up a win streak. They've won their last two. Norfolk State, Ladies they won their last one, and they, what fashion they did it, they did it in a shutout. Yeah, absolutely. And, and for the Eagles playing up against Howard last week, a shutout victory as far as 26. All three running backs, including Totten, Collier, and Freeman, all reached the end zone. All right, let's go into this matchup and preview our players to watch. On your screen right now, you see the junior quarterback, Jawan Carter, number eight from Norfolk State. 2,173 yards passing, 19 touchdowns, completing passes at a rate of 61.2%. And he's leading the MEAC as far as total offense with not just his arm, with his legs as well. He's a dual threat quarterback. He can beat you in two different ways. So the Eagles got to be very, very key on defense for today's game. And defensively for North Carolina Central, Darius Royster, he's got 61 tackles this year. He leads the league with 14 tackles for a loss, and he started his career as a Spartan. Well, yeah, absolutely. And he, he was also the MEAC preseason defensive player of the year, and he has sort of lived up to on that name as well, leading the MEAC as far as tackles for losses with 14 so far. We've got MEAC football coming up for you right here on ESPN3 and the MEAC Digital Network. It's North Carolina Central as they host Norfolk State. This is MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. We've got kickoff coming your way right after these messages. Dr. Kevin Jenkins, internationally known author, motivational speaker, and the man behind Eagle Pride and... This December 21st, the best in HBCU football will collide in Atlanta at the Celebration Bowl. MEAC versus SWAC. Champion versus champion. Only one team will rise above the rest and claim the coveted Celebration Bowl trophy. Come join the celebration at Mercedes-Benz Stadium this December. For more information, visit thecelebrationbowl.com. In the Mideastern Athletic Conference, success for our student athletes isn't just measured by wins and losses, points on the scoreboard, or individual stats. For nearly 50 years, it's also been measured by their performance in the classroom, in the community, and ultimately, graduation. Our student athletes aren't just playing to win a single game. They're playing to win at life. Because games end, but life keeps on going. The MEAC, educating student athletes for the game of life. It's MEAC football season, and things are about to get wild. Could the Aggies bury the Bison? Or will the Bears make a run at the ratings board? Will the Rattlers strike before the Bulldogs bite? Will the Eagles sink their talents into the title or feel the Hornets sting? Could the Wildcats wrap their jaws around victory? Or will the Spartans win out in the hunt? It's the road to the 2019 Celebration Bowl. May the wildest team win. North Carolina Central University is one of our nation's most prized assets. Our law school ranks fourth in the nation for clinical opportunities. We offer cutting edge technology in the biosciences. We help students master their craft. At North Carolina Central University, we are a first choice premier institution. Good afternoon, welcome to O'Kelly Riddick Stadium here in the Bull City of Durham, North Carolina. North Carolina Central University getting ready to host Norfolk State for homecoming right here on ESPN3 and the MEAC Digital Network. I'm Jonathan Duran, alongside myself we have Sports Network intern Joshua Stephenson, North Carolina Central and Norfolk State getting ready to meet here. The last time these two teams met, Norfolk State came out the victors and they spoiled a North Carolina Central. It a home streak ended in an 18 game streak of wins against MEAC Conference opponents. Yeah, and absolutely. And now, historically speaking, for the Eagles, we're up in the series 10 to 6. But since it's homecoming, we get an added booster because we're 64 and 19 in terms of homecoming games. That's a 76 win percentage, and we're looking to extend that to any game today 
in this game against the Northern Ladies State. Spartans won the coin toss. They have elected to kick, and we are ready to go here from O'Kelly Riddick Stadium. As Josh Nardone sends it away, this kick will go into the end zone, and the Eagles will have a touchback to start the game as the return man right there, he almost thought about trying to make something magical happen, but Shamar Baker, encouraged by his teammates, will take a knee in the end zone. And the Eagles will go out on offense first. And this Eagle offense, they're led by a couple of players in this backfield. Number 11, Davius Richard, freshman quarterback from Belle Glade, Florida. And he'll start with his tailback on his hip, Isaiah Totten, the redshirt junior, 137 carries for 599 yards and three touchdowns, including one last week at Howard. Isaiah Totten moving up that rank list as far as leading rushes in the MEAC. He's one of the best, and we're glad that he's wearing maroon and gray and not green and white. Four receivers in the shotgun for North Carolina Central. A quick pass on the outside to Isaiah Totten, and the Spartans in there very quickly to shut that down. In Bridget there, flashing into the backfield. Complete. Looked like that was Tackle. number 22 for the Spartans. Tackle That's Nyree Quinterly. And Nyree Quinterly, he's one of the guys to watch for the Spartans. 77 and tackles, three, three interceptions. This Spartan secondary are one of the best in the league. You look at their back four. Devin Coles has four interceptions. Nyree Quinterly has three interceptions. And Brandon Savage on the outside has two picks as well. But this time, they're not going to have to worry about it, or they might as... Davius Richard was able to get out of the pocket. That pass was incomplete, and the Eagle went to scoop it up as it fell onto the ground, but that should Richard go in as an incomplete pass incomplete. looking on the quick out route. So it's going to be third down now for North Carolina Central after the Spartan defense crushing this Eagle third pocket down. early. Well, if you had closed your eyes about three seconds within the play, you would have thought that the play was over, but com completely with, with the Spartans just attacking the O-line, but uh, uh, Davis rolled out. Unfortunately, they couldn't make a play. Davius Richard, he's been one of the better quarterbacks in this league for extending the play. And he's going to try to do as much as he can for North Carolina Central. They face third down now, but whistles, flags before the snap. And it's going to be a false start. And that's something that North Carolina Central, they've improved over the last couple of games. But Coach Trey Oliver, he likes to call them self-inflicted negatives, which shortens the sins. He's not a big fan of when that happens. A false start will send North Carolina Central back even further. And it's going to become about third and 20 now for this North Carolina Central team. Well, the teams who tend to win as far as wins in college championships, they are the most disciplined. They have the fewest penalties. That's the thing he's really trying to stress on his players. Third and 21. The line to gain is at the 35, still in the Eagles' own territory. Davius Richard throws it over the middle. That pass is caught by Ryan McDaniel at the 30-yard line. But that won't be enough for a first down. Let's go to our starting lineup for Norfolk State very quickly. As they get the job done, they force North Carolina Central three and out. Chris Myers, Tavian Blackwell, Kyron Speller, Ricky Thomas Jr., the front four, three linebackers, Cephas Harden, Nigel Chavis, and Dale Craig. And in the back, as we talked about, that secondary that's very dangerous. Devin Coles, Bobby Price, Nairi Quinterly, and Brandon Savage. And now John Picaro will head out to the field to punt. And Tremaine Talbert back to return for the Spartans. Punt let off high into the air. And it's going to be way for a fair catch. Justin Smith back there for Norfolk State. They're going to start at the 29-yard line in their own territory. And let's take a moment now to meet... This Spartan team, Kenneth Kirby, Jalen Powell, Dominic Jordan, Justin Red, and Terrell Lipscomb are the front five, and their job, their main job today is going to protect quarterback number eight, Jawan Carter, one of our players to watch today. And he is definitely one of the best offensive weapons we have in the MIA. So dynamic, able to make plays with his legs and able to throw darts down the field. He has completed 161 passes, 19 of them for scores. He also has five touchdowns on the ground as he starts in a three-receiver shotgun. And they go on the play action, a quick pass on the screen, caught on the near side, trying to follow his blockers, has a little bit of an alleyway, carrying that one Raekwon Smith all the way up to the 45, Carter, and a quick man, first down complete, for Norfolk State. A way to stay patient in between the blocks. You, in those design plays, you have to be a little patient and wait for the blocks to get ahead of you so you can get a couple more yards. Raekwon Smith, one of the three running backs listed on the depth chart for the Spartans. It's actually the third one. That goes in as his 10th catch of the year. They're gonna hand it off to him, but he's not gonna get out of the backfield, and he'll be stared down there by Jesse Molit, the defensive end for North Carolina Central. Yeah, for that time, that play didn't work. Quick wrap up by the defense in order to get out of it. 
Jesse Mogit, Sarah Stanback, Khalid Blunt, and Darius Royster, the front four. Darius Royster, he's one of our players to watch defensively for North Carolina Central, the senior from Chesapeake, Virginia. He actually wanted to start his career as a Spartan. He went to Norfolk State, tried to get on the team as a walk-on, and was unsuccessful. Quick pass out on the flat route, caught. That's enough for the first down, it looks like, as he spins out of the tackle before being sandwiched. Raekwon Smith, that's his second catch today, and he has pushed Norfolk State for two first downs now. Well, the last play he got swallowed up not very far from the line of scrimmage. This time he rolls out a little bit more near the sidelines, does a quick little spin move, but the Eagles wrap him up on the near the sidelines. So it's another first down for Norfolk State. They're up to the 45-yard line in Eagle territory. Spartans trying to score first. And they'll go into a pistol set now on the far sideline. Spartans trying to take control of this ball game just like they did when they were here two years ago. They go on the read option and hand it off to Johnson, the tailback from Suffolk, Virginia. He carries it for a couple of yards. And Norfolk State, they really seem committed to getting this ground game going right now. Well, like, like I said, some people like to set up the run. It gets the offense more involved as far as when the defense is trying to figure out what play they're trying to do. Second and eight now for the Spartans. Staying in this shotgun set, plenty of options for Carter. They have three receivers listed, Justin Smith, Mark Ellington, and DeKendall James. Three very dangerous options for Jawan Carter. As he takes this snap, and they'll go on the counter this time around. The tailback trying to make his way outside, carrying that one. Kevin Johnson inside the 30-yard line. Another first down for the green and gold. And a big wave of green and gold support on the other side. Very happy with the way this game is starting. And Kevin Johnson, not to be confused with NBA superstar, that Kevin Johnson, no, this is a different one. This one moves in between the tacklers on the gridiron, and he picks up a very nice game on the play. Norfolk State wasting no time as they work their way down the field. Now the Spartans, they're a team, they don't go as quickly as many other teams do. They like to huddle up, they like to get their personnel, get everybody matched up. As they take this next snap, they go on the read option. Carter looking for the end zone on the fade route, has a man, and he brings it in, incomplete. It looked like that was nearly there for Justin Smith. And he just missed dropping it into the breadbasket. Well, from this angle, it looked like he had it. He had to do a little more concentration as far as getting the ball in as a wide receiver. Uh, unfortunately, they couldn't convert on that play. Justin Smith, the redshirt junior, six foot two from the capital of the Commonwealth State, Richmond, Virginia. He leads the Spartans in scores. He has four receiving touchdowns, 26 catches for 474 yards on the outside. And they continue in this three wide set, but they move Smith off the field. Carter on the handoff here, shrugging off tacklers. Kevin Johnson again goes up for about six yards. And it's now third down for Johnson. Norfolk State. They are in the scoring territory up. as they want to try to get on first. And for the Spartans, they have two keen weapons there with Smith and to Kendall James. James leading the team as far as receptions with 34, when with 30 in this season so far. Third and four. So it's now third and from four for Norfolk line. State from the 20 yard line. They need to get to the 16-yard line to continue this drive. So they'll line up two receivers to the near side and the shotgun and offset tight end on the right side. That's Anthony Williams. They motion the tailback that was in the slot. They hand it off in the backfield. And it looks like they might be close to the first down there for Gerald Hewlett Jr. And they will lean the sticks forward. So Hewlett Jr. will push the Spartans forward. And that's a fresh set of 10 he yards for NSU. Yeah, for that defense, you want to do the best job you can by getting well, that defense off the field. Dead. Those long drives for a defense eight. will cost you later on down in the game. Spartans on the ball for the first time today. There's nine minutes and 40 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Spartans very methodically going down the field. Live from O'Kelly Riddick Stadium in Durham, North Carolina. Another handoff for Hewlett, and he surges for about three yards Hewlett, there. It'll the be second area. down. Hewlett from Springfield, Virginia. A lot of local products on both of these teams. You look at this spotting board for Norfolk State. Jawan Carter from Virginia. Gerald Hewlett Jr. from Virginia. Kevin Johnson, Raekwon Smith. On the outside, Justin Smith to Kendall James. All from Virginia. And it just goes to show that local recruiting Always can do something good for you. As they sling this one to the end zone, looking for Mark Ellington. That's incomplete. Tough coverage there from Justin Nicholson. And it's now third down. 
Oh. Angleton was looking for a pass interference, but you can clearly see that he kind of left his eyes off the ball and looked directly at the left to look for him some type of help, but didn't get in on a play. Third down. It's his third down, Mark Ellington. You can definitely expect him to get targeted a lot. Stands six foot six, 18 catches, 226 yards, plus a score this season. And he's lined up on the outside, always one of the big spots to look for on those fade routes. They'll go into an open five wide set, and Jawan Carter, pressure's coming. He throws this one, it's gonna be incomplete as that one bounces in to the tailback Hewlett. And it's now fourth down, the Spartans are gonna have to settle for a field goal. Carter looking through his progressions, he looked a little bit uh, more on Ellington, he wanted to get him more involved, but Cookie saw he wasn't available to do it somewhere elsewhere. So on the kick will be Josh Nardone for the Spartans. So he gets ready to send this one through Back the uprights. Five for six for field goals this year. As long as of the season, 44 yards. This one really going to be about 39. So within his range, kicking from the right side, hash mark. Snap and hold are clean. His kick is on the way. It has the distance, and it is ruled to be through the pipes. So Norfolk State. They jump out in front. They lead this game three to nothing with eight minutes and 44 seconds to go here in the first quarter. Spartans lead 3-0. You're watching MEAC football on ESPN3 and the MEAC Digital Network. MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Jonathan Duran alongside Joshua Stephenson. Our score right now. Norfolk State, three, North Carolina Central, zero. The Spartans march down the field with no problem on their first possession of the game. The Spartans kick off once again. This kick received from the nine-yard line, and that's Cotterington looking to return this one, and he'll be swarmed at the 16-yard line. That's where North Carolina Central will start their second drive of the game. Let's go back to that last drive for the Spartans. Got it done on the ground featuring Hewlett and also Kevin Johnson. Yeah, absolutely, as far as, far as utilizing the run game. Uh, the pass really wasn't working well. I got a couple um, possessions up here where they where they used the pass, but the majority of the time they used the run to set them up for a field goal, and they now have a score of 3-0. Over the back at the start of the last drive, Kevin Johnson weaving his way through. Been a big spark pull up, and now it's up for North Carolina Central to try to do the same thing. Three receivers as they turn around and hand this one off. No, they'll go play action, but the quarterback – Davius Richard harried Richard as he tried to pass in one. It goes incomplete. Smart defense came faster than what Davis was uh, expecting. That's why the pass was a little bit inaccurately thrown. Uh, tough break for the Eagles. Second down and 10 for North Carolina Central. This is about the same spot where they started their first drive. A touchback. They started from the 20-yard line. They were unable to gain a first down. And they're trying to try it again here on their second possession of the game. Davius Richard will clap his hands together and take this snap as he looks upfield. Pressure coming in again. He has to sling this one out of bounds over the head of Ryan McDaniel. But Norfolk State, they've definitely gotten the message. They don't want Davius Richard, Richard to have bad. any time, any Incomplete. comfortability in the pocket. Third the next down. best thing as a pass rusher, if you can't get to the quarterback, the next best thing is to make him throw an inaccurate pass. And you just witnessed that on this last play defensively. The Eagles struggling on offense to start this game. Try to hand off on their first drive, got driven backwards, and the Spartans really just buckling down. Pressure of four coming in. Pass is intercepted. Well, it should have been. And two Norfolk State players collide with each other. Nigel Chavis highly upset as he looks at Bobby Price, and Price is like, man, I had it. Chavis says, I'm sorry. Whoa, Richard. Bait him on that play, threw him in the sea of hands of green and white, and unfortunately for the Spartan defense, they couldn't uh, grab the ball once it left his hands, but you saw that. Another look at this pass here, nearly intercepted. You see Chavis collide with Bobby Price, and Price is looking at him incredulous, saying, why did you do that? How could you have dropped it? He was right there. Hakaro punts away to Norfolk State. Be returnable for Justin Smith, but he calls for the fair catch instead at the 41-yard line, and that's where the Spartans will start their next drive after this break. 
Spartan's lead it three to nothing with eight minutes to go in the first quarter. You're watching MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. It all comes down to a single defining moment. When a plan stops being a plan and gets set into motion. Today's Merrill can help you get there with the people, tools, and personalized advice to help turn your ambitions into action. What would you like the power to do? MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Jonathan Duran and Joshua Stephenson here at O'Kelly Reddick Stadium here in Durham, North Carolina. Spartans on the field looking to add on to their lead. They're up three to nothing, and they're going to go right back to what got them in front. Another running play. This time they go on the pitch Johnson for Kevin Johnson. That's good for about two. Well, Spartans over to stick and wit has been working for them so far. They're going to continue to go to the well as far as the running game here for their offense. Second down and Second down eight. And eight. Norfolk State really have only passed the ball a couple of times, and when they have, it's gone to Kevin Johnson. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they're going to, to the high hand. That's what you got to do as far as rhythm go. That's what these sports games are based on rhythm. You got to keep the offense, keep going. Darius Royster trying to disrupt that rhythm. He's been held in check so far by this Spartan offensive line. Plenty of time for Carter. Floats one to the near side, and that's going to be incomplete. As Tylen McElhaney tried to snare that one out of the sky with a one-handed stab. He tried to swim Runners back, back inside past the defensive back. Well, preferably coaches Defended. say they want to have it with two McElhaney. hands. But if you can get it with one hand, you can get it, but a little bit more tough as far as catching it. Of course, Third you know, down. in this day and age, just about everybody out there has the gloves and technology always advancing. And I'll tell you what, those, gro those gloves have a very, very high coefficient of friction. You remember when they used to use stick them? <laughs> you remember that when players used to walk around looking like they just rolled around in glue all day? <laughs> Just put it on your hands, man. Yeah, just put it on your hands. You just catch it every time. Third and eight. Number eight running up the field. He's going to slide down short of the first down. Jawan Carter chews up about Jawan four. It's going to be fourth down. Positive yards, but not enough. And Jawan Carter, again, we talked about his proficiency throwing through the year. But on the ground as well, he has five touchdowns as you see him head off the field. Yeah, absolutely. Um, during that play, could have settled for a majority of a loss, but decided to roll out a little bit, but unfortunately the drive stalled right there. Brandon, Brandon Cotterington goes back to return back for North Carolina team. Central. He was the hero two weeks ago for this Eagle team. He watches this punt take a sideways bounce. It's heading towards the sideline. It'll be scooped up on the near side by the Spartans at about the 23-yard line. The and send us away another media timeout. The Spartans lead it three to nothing, 650 to go here in this first quarter of play. You're watching MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network in ESPN3. What would you like the power to do? MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Jonathan Duran alongside Joshua Stephenson. It's three to nothing. Norfolk State leading here from O'Kelly Reddick Stadium in Durham, North Carolina. Spartans trying to ruin North Carolina Central's homecoming, and they're doing a good job of it so far as North Carolina Central tries to give the Spartans a dose of their own medicine as they run their pitch play. It's Isaiah Totten on the carry, gets about five yards there, and a little bit of pushing and shoving once that play is done. But North Carolina Central finally looking like they're going to get some traction here. Yeah, absolutely. Um, their first couple of drives really didn't uh, plan out to what they was really trying to do, but first starting off this drive with the run game and the significantly increasing it as far as yards on that play. Second down for the Eagles, still within their own territory. They haven't gotten the midfield yet today. Isaiah Totten trying to be patient, but waits too long. And the white shirts of Norfolk State will bring him down in the backfield. And celebrating there, Tavian Blackwell, the junior from Richmond, Virginia. No gain on the play. Third down. Third down for NSU. And I tell you what, this front four for the Spartans has been very active so far in this game. The front four and also their secondary. There's a reason why in the last game against Morgan State they had five takeaways defensively. This is team is not to be dealt with. And, of course, the biggest number, zero points allowed. Pass to the near side, incomplete. 
That one got very quickly onto the hands of Ryan McDaniel. He just couldn't hold on to it. The ball popped straight into the air, and he couldn't find it after that. Yeah, like that could have been a great play. He didn't concentrate well on the ball. He had an opportunity to catch the ball and keep it moving, but unfortunately the ball hit the ground. It's fourth down now. North Carolina Central has had three unsuccessful drives now. On the ball three times, forced three and out three times, and the Spartans looking like they haven't cooled off ever since that Morgan State game from last week. Yeah, and it's homecoming. You can see the fans. They're trying to get a little more excitement. They're trying to keep this game going. Uh, Eagles definitely trying to keep this game going for real. John Picaro to punt again. Justin Smith to return again. But don't think they're going to get this one off in time. That'll be a delay of game against North Carolina Central. That'll drive them back five more yards. And another penalty for North Carolina Central that really delay shouldn't have happened. Penalty. So it's now fourth and ten. Back to the 20 yard line. It'll be fourth and, and that's going to give Justin Smith a little more real estate here. As this punt goes on its way to him, spiraling towards the far sideline. And the Eagles are going to touch this one down at the 45. And the Spartans, once again, are going to have a short field. Yeah, it's very unfortunate for the Eagles as far as their special the teams go. Um, last game line. against, uh, well, I would say, well, one of the other games, State. they technically started the game very slow, but hopefully it turned things around in the second half. And talk about that last game. It took North Carolina Central 24 five minutes to get into the end zone on the road at Green Stadium in Washington, D.C. And right now the Spartans are looking like they're going to try to force the same thing to happen here. But this time they're going to try to stretch out the lead. They're up 3-0. They have the ball at midfield. Start this drive with a handoff to Hewlett. Hewlett through the red wave, and he's going to take this one for about 12 yards on first down. Gerald Hewlett, Jr., surging forward for first and 10 for the Spartans. Burst of speed of lightning in between the line of scrimmage. Keeps going after the wrap up, gained a couple more yards after the fell down. So when the play ships right through it. Nice patience. Spartans on the ball again. They'll hand it off to Hewlett. Hewlett stutter step outside into green space, up to the 25, to the 20, inside the red zone. Finally pushed Hewlett outside of the 15, but a flag thrown flag in the backfield the during the play, and it's going to be a hold against the Spartans, and the Eagles will catch a break here. But Gerald Hewlett Jr., he saw green space, and he was quickly on the move. Can we take a look at that real quick? Hewlett, the redshirt senior from Springfield, Virginia, See the referee make the call, holding against the Spartans. Now driving back 10 more yards. And it's really just been a stable of running the backs. Be they have three running backs. Down North Carolina the Central, they have the three line. running backs that they always like to Where tot. As Isaiah 20. Totten, Jordan Freeman, and Mookie Collier. They haven't really been able to get that rotation going quite yet. But for Norfolk State, we've seen Hewlett and Kevin Johnson and Raquan Smith. Now here's Carter to pass, throws it on the screen. This one's caught, but nowhere to go in the backfield was the wide receiver to Kendall James. As North back. Carolina Central shuts that down quickly. Eagles pounce on the Spartans offensively behind the line of scrimmage right there. Good play for the Eagles. It'll be second and 23. Just now second down. Second and 23 for Norfolk State as they've been hit hard by that penalty, and they're all the way back to about the 47-yard line in their own territory. Snap now for Carter, five receivers. Carter, punt a bunch of time. Finally slings this one to a man wide open at the 18-yard line and walking into the end zone, Justin Smith. Touchdown, Norfolk State. They lead it nine to nothing. Carter rolled around in her pocket, looking, looking through his progressions. Saw Smith touchdown. wide open with no one near him. An easy touchdown, and the Spartans strike first blood with that touchdown. Justin Smith, he marks down his team-leading fifth receiving touchdown of the year, and the Spartans feeling it early. They're up 9-0 after these first 11 minutes and 10 seconds of play. On the kick, the extra point is Josh Nardone. 
Josh Nardone. As he waits point. on the snap and the hole, both of which are clean, and his kick will go through. It's and 10 to nothing, Norfolk State. So you get another look. Jawan Carter has found a bunch of time in the pocket, and once you have that much time, somebody's bound to be open down the field. And time is all you need if you're a quarterback. When the pocket is calm and there's nobody getting around to you, you can make all the throws in the world. So Norfolk State has been getting things going on the ground, getting things going through the air as well. And the Spartans look to see, seem to be in complete control of this game so far. Well, Carter is definitely making it known to everybody here in O'Kelly Riggs Stadium. There's a reason why I'm top of the MIAG as far as total offense go. So North Carolina Central and try to turn things around. Back to return is Shamar Baker and Brandon Cotterington. And to kick is the place kick specialist, Josh Nardone. And he gets ready to send this one off. Checks his lines on each side, reaches 10, and ushers it skyward. This kick's going to be a little bit shorter, and there's momentum there for Cotterington. Cotterington trying to follow his wedge, and he's not going to be able to turn the corner. Spartans stop that very quickly, trying to get around the outside. Couldn't get it done right there. We're hoping to get right another Cottington run where he just scores another touchdown because that hasn't been done in a very long time. Uh, couldn't get it done right there on that play. So the Eagles will start at the 25. And they'll spread out four receivers here. They'll switch up and put the spell tailback, Jordan Freeman, in the backfield. Richard takes this snap, trying to get positive yardage. This pass is caught by Tyler Barnes at the 38-yard line, but there's North Carolina Central's first offensive first down of this game. It just took them 12 minutes to get there, but let's see if that's going to be a spark for this team. All it takes is one. It's like when you're out on the court, you just need to see the ball go through the net once. Better late than never to have it at all. It's good to have one of these drives going. Those type of plays get your offense going in rhythm. Four receivers, two on each side for Richard. Plenty of time again in the pocket. Picks a receiver, and this one is caught over the middle up to the 45 across Spartan territory. That's EJ Hicks this time around. Hicks, the junior from Rollsville, North Carolina. Tough catch, good concentration on the play after the hit to hold on to the ball, and the Eagles get the drop going. Hicks records his 16th catch of the year. 200 yards plus that last reception and one score in his junior season with North Carolina Central. The Eagles trying to keep things going in the same package. He's worked on the last couple of plays. They're going to try it again for the third. Davius Richard throws this one incomplete. There's a lot of coverage there. It looks like it's going to be clean there for Rashard Russell, the corner from Bridget Norfolk, Bass. Virginia, playing for his hometown school. Eagle offense looking for a penalty, uh, a little Daniel. bit of contact between the cornerback and the receiver, but no flags on the field. Second, Second down for North Carolina Central. Across midfield for the first time today with two and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. Davius Richard checks his lines. Gets ready for the next snap. Free rusher comes in, a screen for Mookie Collier. Collier goes upfield, but a quick recovery by Nigel Chavis. Hunts him down like a shark and brings him down at the 40-yard line. Mookie Collier almost got caught up between the line of scrimmage. It would have the presence of mind to shift in between and get a couple more yards before being swallowed up by the tackler. From the 41 yard line. Third down, North Carolina Central has picked up two first downs on this drive. They're going to try to make it three. They go on the delayed snap count here. The Eagles had some issues with false start penalties and they have seemed to have been able to alleviate that over the last couple of games by going to a different system. And now here's Davius Richard to pass for the first down. That's going to be caught by Deshaun Stevens. Will that be enough? They're going to mark him down. It looks to be a yard shy. Excuse me, that was to number 15, Ryan McDaniel. 
It's going to be fourth and one for North Carolina Central. And it looks like the Eagles might go for it here. And as they do, they're going to go to the extreme heavy package. Going into the backfield now are Khalid Blunt and Cyrus Stanback, two defensive tackles for North Carolina Central. Well, you got to have those big bodies there to help move for blockers. Fourth and one for North Carolina Central. They'll hand it off to the tailback. And Mookie Collier tries to spin out of the tackle, but that's going to be enough for the first down. If he could have eluded the man, he could have scored, but he gets the job done. The Eagles bring in the two defensive linemen as you see them clear a path for Collier. Eagles put up those two big refrigerators in front of Collier, and Collier gets up a couple more yards. That's enough for Eagles first down. So first down for North Carolina Central from the 32-yard line, trying to chip into this deficit. They're down by 10 here in this first quarter of play. MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. All games available there. The quick stop route complete to the near side for Trevion Pratt. Complete. Trevion Pratt uh, synonymous Trevion with the 74-yard play against Delaware State versus speed. Uh, one of the many weapons on the Eagles offense. Second and Second four. Eight. He gets six yards on that last play. Six yards for number six. And the Eagles still in this five wide package. Here's one for the end zone looking for Pratt. Does he haul it in? Does he stay in bounds? He does. Touchdown North Carolina Central as Trevion Pratt just barely stays in bounds. Trevion Pratt slithers between the secondary, catches it. Still maintains his body in bounds. Great play, athleticism on the play. Eagles strike back. And Trevion Pratt records his second touchdown within the last three games. And that catch, good. All scoring plays automatically get reviewed. And he's able to get 10 toes down in bounds as Adrian Olivo kicks the extra point and he puts it through for an extra one. It's now 10 to seven. Trevion Pratt, six points for number six. And the Eagles are right back in this game. And as you can see, Davis drops back and throws a dart right over the Spartan secondary. Pratt catches it, and the Eagles are only down by three. With a little bit of left in the first quarter. 10-7, your new score. Finishing up our first quarter of play. Jonathan Dern alongside Joshua Stephenson. Glad to have you with us here on this great Saturday afternoon. North Carolina Central, they only have one more home game left. It'll be against South Carolina State next week. And for Norfolk State, they're going to be on the road next week, and their final home game will be against South Carolina State as well. For the Spartans, they're trying to continue on a winning streak. They've won their last game, trying to finish out on a positive note. But North Carolina Central, even with the two losses, they're trying to remain within the title hunt. They have to win out, however, and it's a tough road. The Spartans proving tough. South Carolina State and Buddy Pugh and his team, the Bulldogs, have been incredible this season. And still waiting after that are the nationally ranked Aggies of North Carolina a and at their place. And if you've ever seen the Aggies play at a home at bb and Stadium, you know that is a difficult environment. That is any environment, which is why it was a reason for the Aggies homecoming that they just dismantled Howard even going beyond 50 points. And we have some activity going here. It was a late hit maybe on the play. Flag on the field. And homecoming games always brings a little bit of an extra edge and the Spartans trying to assert their dominance, but North Carolina Central responding as well. Here's our call. So the current call is for targeting against Deontay Fair, and that's going to go under review. Get another look at this return here. See if we can find. Excuse me, not number 10. That's going to be number 16. That is what the Spartans were retaliating for. Player coming in with his center of momentum low. The helmet, of course, did look like it let in first. And if that does go first, that is a targeting call that results in an automatic ejection. And as far as lately, 
far as the game of, of football, they have having a very, they're going to definitely referee as far as hits to the head because, you know, the whole CTE protocol and number of players going on concussion. So they are not playing around in terms of shots to the head. This is MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. The 2019 MEAC Volleyball Championship is November 22nd to the 24th in Howard University's Burr Gymnasium. Howard is the four-time defending champion, and the Bison and North Carolina A&T State are the class of the MEAC so far this season. Sunday's championship match will be broadcast live on ESPNU at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Burr Gymnasium, one of the many historic venues within the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. Basketball season has just started. The Spartans picked up a very big win in their season opener in North Carolina Central. They're gearing up for their season opener actually on the court right now against Stephen F. Austin. This basketball season is here. North Carolina Central trying to defend a third consecutive MEAC tournament championship. But for Norfolk State, that tournament happens in their hometown. And they're always one of the top four seeds as well. Yeah, well everybody wants to be the best, but who's going to really gonna step up and be the best as far as basketball? The MEAC, we're definitely productive late down the season, and we're looking to uh, show that same as far as production for the basketball season coming up. Norfolk State, of course, one of the holders, one of the biggest MEAC tournament wins for this conference. As a 15 seed, they upset number two Missouri, led by Kyle O'Quinn had a very strong NBA career as well, just recently inducted into the Spartans Hall of Fame. And then also looking through the history of this conference, Coppin State, look at what they did with Fang Mitchell back in the 90s. This is a league that is full of a bunch of basketball history and we'll have some games on ESPN this season as well. It's North Carolina Central and Norfolk State. Want to step away there. There is no foul for targeting. The player that was under review was number 16, Trayvon Wallace. Another look at that hit there. So it looks like he was able to get his shoulder in rather than his helmet. But to get back to our last point, we will have MEAC games on ESPN. Championship rematch between North Carolina Central and Norfolk State will be one of those games. You can visit MEACsports.com for the official and full list of ESPN basketball broadcasts. As we continue, the Spartans will hand this one off to their tailback. He tries to skip outside. He runs over one man, but he can't get away from the next two. On the carry there for the Spartans, Raekwon Smith, and another couple of flags thrown once that play was done. Smith running in between the tackles. A little, little bit of some uh, extra contact on, on the sidelines, uh, but still a big pickup of play for the Spartans. Looks like we might have one more play. Now we will have our untimed down due to the penalty. You can't end on a penalty. And we will have our one untimed down. The, the PA announcer was trying to send us to the timeout. And the referees are trying to get the players back onto the field. Everybody's trying to get back onto the same page here. A little confusion on the play. It's homecoming, man. <laughs> Sometimes everybody gets everybody gets pretty excited when homecoming rolls around. So we will have our one untimed down. The Spartans now facing first and 20 all the way back at the 25-yard line. And this will end our quarter once this is done, barring another penalty. Waiting for the snap, Jawan Carter. And Carter will pass this one, caught by Mark Ellington, and he is met very quickly there by two Eagles, finishing the play and finishing the quarter, Justin Nicholson and Shamar Baker. Now that is the end of our first quarter, our score Norfolk State 10, North Carolina Central 7. You're watching MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN 3, second quarter, right after these messages. MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN 3. Jonathan Duran alongside Joshua Stephenson. The Spartans have the ball. It's second down and 12 here in the second quarter. Spartans leading 10-7. 
Jawan Carter will hand this one off in the backfield, trying to turn the corner, struggling off the first hit, but not the second, it was the Raquan tailback, Smith. Raquan Smith. And it's now third down, North Carolina Central. They got hammered on the ground after the first quarter, but it looks like they're trying to turn that around here. Well, you're like I said, you have to make no on the uh, adjustments on the fly, and if you see that the run right game has been hurting you, you have to do some ways as far as some defensive shifts in order to counteract that. Spartans gained 50 yards on the ground, 84 yards through the air. They are out gaining North Carolina Central 134 to 92 after the first quarter of play. Jawan Carter trying to add on some yardage. That pass is completed the 50 yard line of Justin Smith, but a flag thrown at the line of scrimmage during the play. Justin Smith, flag on the field. And at the line of scrimmage, usually you get a hold there. Rather, instead of a hole, it's offside against Jerome Foster. Moves the ball out to the and the play will stand. Where it'll be first and ten. It's now first and ten for Nauvoo State. State. Carter drops back. The floater pass for Smith. And it's unfortunate that the Eagles uh, get, get the penalty on their one. First and ten now for the Spartans again inside Eagle territory. Tail back on the right hip and they go play action, the pass quick, complete to the tight end, Sean McFarlane. Carter's pass. And actually, I'm more, su I don't know whether I'm more surprised McFarlane caught that or that it was an interception, intercepted, or the fact that he wasn't able to stay on his feet. Could have went either way. Uh, McFarlane was bracing for the contact way before he was even there. Could have actually went underneath him and kept going. Spartans looking for another touchdown here. Jawan Carter on the wheel route near side is incomplete. Looking for a Tyler McElhaney Carter on the coverage there for North for Carolina McElhaney. Central. Number 22, incomplete. Brian Mills. And Brian Mills, Second he down. picked up an interception last week, and he leads the MEAC with five interceptions on the backside. Brian Mills with the closeout uh, interception during the Delaware State game. Uh, McAfee with a little bit of a contest, just enough to where he wouldn't get the call, but enough that uh, that the receiver could not contest for the ball. And there's an injury on the field, so they'll take a timeout. Now it looks like the tight end, it looks like that was Sean McFarlane who jogged off the field. He's off now, ready to continue. So just a quick stoppage here. Spartans exchange personnel. And they'll reorganize Jawan Carter in this game. Five for nine, 84 yards and one touchdown. He's hungry for another one. He's gone deep on this last two looks. Looks like he might try again, but he's got to run this time around. Looking for a blocker, turns, stops his momentum a little bit too quickly as Carter, Jesse Malik will bring him down. Looking back on you on the Eagles, on the Eagles defensively, the linebackers nine. are zoned out a little bit, not too far to line of scrimmage that let Carter know that, hey, I can run up for a couple yards. It's now third down and nine for the Spartans. As they try to organize everybody here, Spartans really have been great, averaging almost eight yards per play so far in this game. Well, they're doing it in two different ways. They're doing it with the pass and they're doing it with the run, regardless of now they're gaining yards. And Carter waits a second too long, and the timer runs out on him into the backfield to stop that drive short. Cyrus Stanback, the redshirt senior from the Rock of Rockingham, North Carolina. The maroon and gray collapsed the pocket around Carter. Had nowhere to go except for just to take a sack. And we've now entered a little bit of a no man's land for the Spartans. They're at the 41, excuse me, the 36 yard line. Do you bring out the kicking team do you punt from here do you take a shot and it looks like the Spartans are going to keep their offense out here and try to gain as much yards as possible and for their benefit they're going to try to get this first down well this looks like they're going to do a little yeah, bit of gambling on this play Jawan Carter looking upfield has some time rolls out pocket is still there shrugs off a of one tackle helped up by his offensive line he's still running Still has time to pass. Heaves for the end zone. Has three receivers there. That is caught at the one yard line. Are you kidding me? 
They flag thrown flag during the catch, field. but my goodness, what a scramble drill there from Jawan Carter. Carter extending the play long enough for me to go get something to eat from the press box. <laughs> he throws it, and the receiver goes up and catches it, but we'll see if this is against the Spartans or against the Eagles. And Jawan Carter, what a play here. Watch as he rolls out the pocket. Is able to run out, catches an extra block, still stays behind the line of scrimmage, and able to get that one down to the one yard line. An excellent look there from our production crew. Thank you so much to them. Calvin Barnes, Philip Alexander, Abigail Sherrod, and all the rest well, of our crew, Joe Simmons. Line and Joe Sanders, so well, grateful for all the help that they do for all of our home broadcasts here. That's now first and goal for NSU, knocking on the door, trying to make this a two-score game once again. They hand it off to the tailback. He cuts outside, and he will walk into the end zone. Kevin Johnson again puts Kevin the Spartans Johnson ahead the by two scores. Up. Kevin Johnson with a series of moves, baited the defense and thinking he was going right, well, and then swoop, went right around left, and the Spartans are up. Kevin Johnson into the end zone for his first time today. Another look at him bouncing outside and walking into the painted zone. And it's now 16 to seven NSU with this extra point pending. So the Spartans seem very content and very ready to ruin North Carolina Central's homecoming. As they snap this for the extra point, snap and hold clean. And the kick good as well. It's now 17 to 7 NSU. Let's take a look at that last drive for the Spartans. As they get into the end zone. Now 17 7 NSU. Uh, we'll take a short break and we'll recap the drive right after this. You're watching MEAC Football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Hard to do. MEAC football on ESPN3 and the MEAC Digital Network. Jonathan Duran alongside Joshua Stephenson. Spartans leading this game 17 to seven after Kevin Ryan Johnson carries the Spartans the into the end zone on that last drive. Spartans will kick this one off. Mookie Collier will bring in this kick, moving his way towards the near side and brought down at the 35 yard line. Collier nearly collided with his return man there, but able to make things happen. Before we get to our drive here, let's take a look at the last drive. 17 to seven, Norfolk State leads that last drive. Nine plays, 65 yards, three minutes and 46 seconds in the scoring play. A two yard carry by Kevin Johnson. A closer look at the drive brought to you by North Carolina Eye, Ear, Nose and Throat. Visit them online at nceent.com. A five receiver spread for Davius Richard. The Eagles still playing catch up in this contest. As Richard looking upfield, throws a dime over the middle, caught by Tyler Barnes. That's Richard enough for a first down for North Carolina Central. Good strike up the, the field for Richard. Eagles the really trying to get rid of this deficit. First down. So North Carolina Central quickly up the field up to the 50 yard line. Another snap now for Richard. Richard looking, pressure's coming in, and he is going to be brought down by three white shirts in the backfield, leading the way for NSU. So like Deshaun Dixon and Remy Feltis. Richard trying to do his best Carter impression, trying to sneak away from the tacklers. Uh, couldn't get it done on that play. Second down and 19. Eagles still on a five wide spread. As Davius Richard looks for the next snap here. Goes to the hard count, looks to the near side. And now it's gonna change things around. North Carolina Central, they've been reading this defense, but Norfolk State have been one step ahead of the Eagles so far in this game. Rolling out. Davius Richard, he's gonna ask for a block. He's gonna get it from Deshaun Stevens and a crushing one from Trevion Pratt. And they're gonna get him for a blind side, I think. Richard it looked like he came in clean from the near side and he is pleading his case right now. On the field. 
Crack came around the corner, hit him with an uppercut, but I guess the refs are going to throw a penalty flag on there. His coaches are trying to tell him that's not the right play on there during that time. Looks like this should be either blind side, block, block in the back. Let's see which of the ones that they're going to decide to use here. Here's our call. Personal foul, blind side block, offense number six. 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Remain second down. It's a 15 yard penalty from the end of the run. Trevion Pratt, it looked like he was able to get around and the get in front the of the defensive the player. All you have to do is get in front of the numbers to take another the look here, turn in the corner, and it looked like it might have been a clean block, but we're back under what? Five receivers as the Eagles again trying to get things moving upfield. Pratt on that last play doing more harm than good. Uh, cost the Eagles a little bit of yards. The Eagles trying to make up that yardage now. Richard double clutches the pass, completes it to McDaniel. It's be enough for Richard about pass, six or seven there. It's now third down. Threw around in the flats, but the, the defenders were all on it. A pick up of four. And once again, the Eagles are in third, third and 15. 15. McDaniel picks up his team leading third catch of the game. Avius Richard has completed nine passes now. Just hasn't really been able to get things going. Does have one scoring pass, completed Trevion Pratt 26 yards out. The Eagles need to pick up 15 here to get another first down. Pressure coming as the pocket collapses. It's incomplete. Might have been a little miscommunication there, either for Barnes or for EJ Hicks. The pass basically split their locations. It's now fourth down. Had McDaniels wide open on the sidelines, could have uh, picked up a couple more yards, maybe would have got a first down, but I guess uh, Richard just didn't see him. So the Eagles out to punt. It'll be John Picaro to send this one off in the direction of Justin Smith. Justin Smith has been effective returning punt so far today for the Spartans. I have another punt. chance here. He'll watch this one bounce, takes a backwards look, and It'll be a touchdown there very quickly by Matthew Lavelle at about the 26-yard line, and that'll send us to a media timeout. 17 to 7, Norfolk State leads 8:40 to go here in the first half. You're watching Miac Football on the Miac Digital Network and ESPN. What would you like the power to do? MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Jonathan Duran alongside Joshua Stephenson as the Spartans on the field now trying to add on to their lead. They're up 17-7. And they'll hand this one off to the tailback, moving his way forward for a few yards. Gerald Hewlett, Jr. The ball carrier. And Hewlett has been one of the go-to guys for the Spartans so far in this game. 19 yards on the ground so far. Kevin Johnson, 30 with the score as well. But Spartans really getting things going on the ground. But a look here at the quarterback. That's Jawan Carter having an absolute whale of a day so far. Eight for 13, 155 yards plus one touchdown. So they go back on the ground again for Hewlett. And he'll get just shy of the first down marker. It's now third down. Carter let his presence known for today. Well, there was, oh, we have an injury on here on the field. Looks like Chuck Manning for North Carolina Central. But as you were saying about Jawan Carter. Yeah, but back to Carter, uh, whether it's rolling out and throwing on the run, stepping out in the pocket, it's just effortless for him right now. And that's the reason why the Spartans are up in this game. And looking at that last run, you know, as they say teamwork makes the dream work, helped up there by his offensive lineman. He ran into him and said, all right, I'm going to keep you on your feet. Just turn around and keep going. Uh, Jawan Carter, he's really been slicing and dicing. Eight for 13, 155 yards, plus one touchdown as long as of 53 yards so far today. Just simply counteracting what the defense is giving him. If they're rushing him out the pocket, he beats him with his legs. If they're stepping up and making him throw, he's making him pay in that way too. So Eagles are definitely going to have a lot to work with as far as Carter is concerned. And you see the injured Eagle up and walking off the field under his own power. Number 99, 
for the Eagles. Chuck Manning, sophomore from Durham, North Carolina. Went to Riverside <laughs> High School here in the city. They hand the ball off again, and that's enough for the first down. Gerald Hewitt, Jr., again, carrying the Spartans across the sticks. And they're sticking with the run here. The three are running back system regarding Smith, Johnson, and Hewlett Jr. They're all being very productive as far as keeping the defense on their heels. Up to the 41-yard line, still in their own territory. They'll spread out four receivers. Carter takes his time. Pressure's coming in, throws it over the middle, and that's another pitch and catch complete. Should be enough for the first down as you see Justin Smith reach out and make the signal at midfield. Well, the Smith brothers are definitely mercenaries out on the field. You got the one Justin Smith is doing his hat, doing his best job of wreaking havoc receiving-wise, and Raekwon Smith is doing just the same thing but on the ground. Justin Smith, two for 76 through the air. Raekwon, two carries on the ground so far. Hasn't registered a yard yet. Uh, of course, he'll try to turn that around. It's Hewlett again on the carry. Hewlett surges through the line. That's another carry of about seven. And Hewlett having an absolute day right now, averaging over six yards a carry. And you can see the same thing for Kevin Johnson. And when you have players on your roster who, when one starter isn't doing it with his job, and you have the next man up, you got to have those. You got to utilize your resources. You see Hewlett actually just left the field to be a little bit shaken up. Maybe it's just... That was a lot of touches, a lot of carries. We'll see if he'll return to this game. They're going to turn around and go to Raekwon Smith, who we were just talking about. He's in the backfield now. And he waits to see what happens here. And he takes the handoff here, turning the corner. And he's going to slip through the line, but he is hit absolutely hard as he gets through the line. Raekwon Smith meeting a wall covered in maroon and gray. Number 10, Deontay Fair there on the tackle. My bad, Deontay Fair. And Deontay Fair, see him turn the corner and shut the door very quickly, helping him out, Cyrus Stanback. Third and four. Now third and four. And Spartans picked up a few first downs already. They're two for five on third down so far in this game. One for one on fourth down, and that was that long scrambling play that we saw from the quarterback, Jawan Carter. Carter's gonna scramble again, throws his one on the sidearm and completes it to Kendall James, the beneficiary. Oh, he gets the first down and another tangle, flags thrown once again, tempers running very high in this game. Yeah, they definitely seem to be going at it here on the field, but you can't let the feel of the game overtake the, the mission you have as far as being disciplined on defense. The referees are going to sort everybody out, get them apart. And they'll look to make this call now. Dolphins play is a first down. After the play, dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 57. Player coming off to the bench. That is number 57, first unsportsmanlike conduct foul of the contest. It will be first and 10 after the result of the penalty. So just one penalty assessed there. It goes against Jonathan Hall, the redshirt freshman linebacker from Cortland, Virginia. The ball will be moved back. You see that sidearm the sling there line. from Jawan Carter. And then once the play was done, a lot of the pushing and shoving, the tangle up there, and then you see the Spartan ten. player leaving the sideline Number there to get into the fray where he's not supposed to be. Yeah, even people who are not on the field get caught up in the mix. <laughs> Everybody wants to be in the action. Unfortunately, you know, only 22 can be within the boundaries. And once you add an extra, penalties get thrown. The Spartans back on the field. It's first down. Jawan Carter has time, throws on the move, has a man there, caught, and he's going to try to get away from everybody. Throws a stiff arm inside the 10-yard line there, Justin Smith. And he might get called for pass interference as he tried to create some separation there before making that spectacular grab. Well, regardless of not if it's a penalty or not, great play by Justin Smith to go at That's it. It's like painting the masterpiece and just throwing a whole bucket of water on it. It just ruins it. Now look here is 
Jawan Carter rolls out. And you see here on the bottom part of your screen, Justin Smith, he creates a separation he needed to break that, break away from the DB and make the catch. But pass interference or not, great move by him. Unfortunately, not legal. Absolutely. At the 31 yard line. So the Spartans are now facing first and a 25. 15 yards assessed from the line of scrimmage. The Spartans have a lot of yardage to go. And with under five minutes to go in this first half, content to hold on to the ball as long as possible, go to the locker room with a lead. Looked like he was looking for a comeback route. Miscommunication there. Tylen McElhaney didn't come back. The Eagle player did, but the pass out of bounds. No way for him to make a play. Pass intended for McElhaney. And now it's second complete. down. Second Carter down. throwing in there for a souvenir. Seems to be a lot of players huddled around one, one person. And it looks like a we'll stoppage for an injury on the field. An injured eagle down. Looks like that is number 98, Miles Terman. And the athletic training staff out to check on him. Timeout for an injury. This will also be a media timeout. That's going to send us to a media timeout. So the injured eagle will get the attention and we'll step away. This is MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. of doneness. So let's get after it. What would you like the power to do? MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Jonathan Duran alongside Joshua Stephenson. Four receivers for the Spartans. The injured eagle off the field. That was Miles Terman. He'll be checked in by the North Carolina Central Sports medicine staff as the Spartans two up those 15 yards that they lost in that pass interference play to Justin Smith on the carry. Raquan Smith, Raquan Smith right up the field. He takes it out to the 40. He's going to get 15 line. yards there. It's now but third, and, third ten. and 10. Spartans going back to what's always been working for him the whole game so far is the run game. Uh, Raycon Swift with a burst of speed out grabs a nice chunk of yards. North Carolina Central has been held to just eight yards on the ground. And Norfolk State is up to 60 after that last carry. Another handoff. No, they'll go on the play action. This one heaved a rainbow towards the end of the field, and that's going to be broken up. Getting in front of the ball for North Carolina Central, Brian Mills, North, the, the MEACs interception leader. Mills in the best position to get that interception. Carter baited him into throwing into double coverage. See right here on this play. Carter drops back and throws it up in the air for too long. Can't throw in a double coverage like that. Luckily, it was not picked off. Ryan Mills able to get in there and record the pass breakup. And now here's the punt from the Spartans. Brandon Codrington will backpedal and call for the fair catch at the 15 yard line. Three minutes and 20 seconds remaining here in this first half of play. Stay tuned to the break for our halftime show. Presented by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of North Carolina. We also have a feature story on Darius Royster. We mentioned that he wanted to start his career as a Spartan. He attempted to walk on and didn't make the team there. Transferred here and his first game he set the school record for tackles for loss in the MEAC SWAC Challenge and has gone on to be named Phil Steele's FCS MEAC Defensive Player of the year in the preseason. And he's lived up to the billing so far and you'll get a chance to hear his story during our halftime break. North Carolina Central down by 10, trying to shorten this deficit before the half. A quick catch on the outside to Trevion Pratt and he'll be suplexed down. Excuse me, that's EJ Hicks brought down. No flag thrown for unsportsmanlike conduct, although the North Carolina Central sideline definitely it wanted it. The yeah, uh, the players on the sidelines were looking for the flag to be thrown. Uh, but I guess uh, no flags on the field for that one. Not the full suplex there, but still two points for the takedown. He wanted it. He really wanted <laughs> it. Second down and six for the Eagles. Still with four receivers. And the snap is low, but a flag thrown might have been false start maybe. False start. Offense. 
and the Eagles are going to lose yardage there on the penalty. Penalized now for the third time in this game. They're going to lose the an extra line. 10 yards here. Low snapping. These are the type of plays that's going to make a coaching staff throw his clipboard on the field. You can't have those type of penalties. That definitely stalls the offense. Five yards, rather, on the false start. Second and 11. A motion the receiver from the outside, and now looking upfield is Richard. Richard in the pocket, and he stays too long as the Spartans bring him down at the 12. Richard Spartans uh, defense the making it hard for uh, Richard to make his progressions down two. the field. Held the ball too long and got third swallowed up in 13. the backfield. Now third and a 13 for North time Carolina out. Central. First team Spartans are going to take the timeout here timeout. as they try to extend the half and get an extra chance on the football. A champion will rise at the 2019 Celebration Bowl. The champions of the MEAC and SWAC will meet at Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia on Saturday, December 21st to fight for black college supremacy. The game will be broadcast live on ABC starting at 12 p.m. Eastern. Visit thecelebrationbowl.com for more information. The Celebration Bowl, always a fantastic atmosphere held down at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. North Carolina Central has made one appearance there. That was in the final year of the Georgia Dome. And the supremacy right now belongs to the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference. North Carolina A&T has won it three times. Well, they're always at the top of the, as far as the MIA goes. Uh, so there's a reason why they, they, they seem to make a, a fond of appearance during that tournament series. Four receivers for North Carolina Central. It's third down. Two minutes to go in the half. Davius Richard runs out of the pocket, has a man open. That's EJ Hicks. He catches at the 50 yard line, and he's going to try to sprint past everybody. And he's going to be pushed out of bounds at the 30 yard line. That one goes for about 60 yards, and North Carolina Central trying to strike and get into the end zone. Richard keeping his eyes up field, recognized that it was a receiver with no, with no defenders near him, threw the ball to right to him. Nice big chunk of yards for their passing game. You see Davius Richard rolling, sees the man open, and EJ Hicks brings it in, and the Eagles ready to snap it again from the 34-yard line. Richard takes this snap, looking upfield. The Spartans bring the house, but that pass complete to Ryan McDaniel out to the 24-yard the line, just short of the first down marker, but a flag thrown flag after the play. That might go against North Carolina Central. Flag on the field. As you can see the Spartan men marching with the Eagles back to where they're supposed to be in the show-off very fashion. Uh, Deshaun Dixon, the defensive end, taking great pleasure in that call. Here, the play is a player short of the line of the game. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number 50. The 15-yard penalty from the end of the run. So a 15-yard penalty after the end of the run. It's now second down, so it'll be second and 16 for North Carolina Central as they were stopped a yard short of the first down markers. You see head coach and now the defensive line coach for North Carolina Central speaking with, excuse me, the offensive line coach speaking with Andrew Dale after the last penalty. Now Should second and 16 for the whistle. Eagles. Mostly that is making sure he doesn't do that again. Always words of encouragement. It's now second and 16 for the Eagles from the 40-yard line in Spartan territory. The snap a little bit low, picked up by Richard. Richard steps in the, in the pocket. He's going to run with it, spins away from one tackle, stays on his feet to about the 30. Richard doing a little spin around, press the circle button on that one. Richard right around the, the defender. Good way to use his legs and Takes gain a couple yards in the field. It's now third and six. mid to gain for North Carolina Central after the penalty. 90 seconds remaining in the half. The Eagles trying to make this a one-score game before the intermission. Davius Richard throws a stop route. That pass is complete to McDaniel. And let's see where they spot him. Back with the complete. forward progress, they're going to put him down at the 21. The ball will be Actually, they'll put him at the 20, the but either way, it'll be fourth and one. It'll be fourth and one. And this time, it'll be North Carolina Central to take the timeout. It's fourth and one. 
70 seconds left in the half. Do you take the points, go for the field goal, or do you go for the end zone here? I say you want to go for it. Um, this whole game, um, NCC really hasn't been uh, taking too many chances downfield. Majority of the time in this situation, they will punt it. But I feel now in this situation, you can't really afford to punt and give the Spartans this much momentum coming in to the second half. Homecoming, you always want to be on the right side. See another look here for Davius Richard on that last run. Able to catch a downfield block there. Everybody working together. Jamal Curry Elliott out there able to help clear a path. And the Eagles are going to go the to the Eagle heavy pistol Eagle set. The they bring in the D tackles again. Curry Elliott is the tailback. They turn and give it to him. Curry Elliott outside, tripped up, and he won't get to the line to gain. So the Spartans able to step up big and shut down the fourth down conversion. See, I thought it was going with a little switcheroo, have him be the bait runner and have Richard roll around on the other way the and pick up a couple more yards, but unfortunately he couldn't stay up. And the Eagles are forced to punt. Turnovers stopped for no gain, and the Spartans will take over, and they have an opportunity to go for the end zone again. You see Curry Elliott trying to turn the corner, but a shoestring tackle from the Spartan in this game. Absolutely. Stop the play. High snap brought down, but the handoff complete. But the mesh point broken wide open in the backfield as North Carolina Central stops that play short. Hit him up in the backfield. Corner. Good play defensively. Making the play for North Carolina Central. Chuck Manning joined by one other North Carolina Central from the Eagle. 22. Second down and 15 for NSU. They have to snap the ball one more time at the very least. And they will go to the half with the lead. They're up 17-7. Let's we'll see if they try to add on a few more points here with one more shot. Another handoff instead for Hewitt. And Hewitt will take this one back to the original line of scrimmage. And Unless it, either one of these coaches decides to call a timeout that should bring us to the end of the first half. A brilliant first half of football. And Alpha State leaving with the advantage. They're up 17 to 7, trying to make it two MEAC wins in a row and two wins in a row here at O'Kelly Riddick Stadium. 17 7, your score at the midway point. You're watching MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network. Our halftime show presented by Blue Cross Blue Shield comes your way next here on ESPN3. What would you like the power to do? MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Jonathan Duran joined here by Joshua Stephenson as we have reached the end of the first 30 minutes of play. Norfolk State leading 17 to seven here in Durham, North Carolina. As the Spartans are trying to end North Carolina Central's win streak and ruin their homecoming. Take a look back at our first half. Jawan Carter leads the way. Eight for 13 with 155 yards and a one touchdown. Davius Richard, eight for 14. I mean, Darius Ross, I'm from Chelsea, Virginia. I'm a senior deep the center. Bring just a three, and the quarterback back down. Darius Royster, the tackle. First half of play. Kevin Johnson carried the ball into the end zone for the Spartans. That was their first scoring play. Five carries for 30 yards and one touchdown. And then you have Smith, two catches for 76 yards and one score as well. I've seen a lot of great plays from the quarterbacks as they've been able to escape the pocket and get downfield and make things happen. But none more so than Jawan Carter, as he has been highlighted as one of the better players within the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, and he is completely showing his medal today. Overall, the Spartans outgaining North Carolina Central 201-92. to And that difference in yardage has helped to give the Spartans their 10-point lead. They're up 17-7 to at our midway point, and we'll step away for a quick break. And when we come back, we have a look inside on the career and the background on North Carolina Central's defensive end 
Darius Royster. This is Eagle football, excuse me, this is MIAC football on the MIAC Digital Network and ESPN3. And we'll be back with more right after this break on ESPN3 on the MIAC Digital Network. This is MIAC football on the MIAC Digital Network and ESPN3. North Carolina Central hosting Norfolk State at O'Kelly Riddick Stadium in Durham, North Carolina. Homecoming for North Carolina Central. It's a reverse homecoming for Darius Royster as he faces Norfolk State, a team that he wanted to be a part of as a freshman, tried to walk on there, was unsuccessful, and now as an Eagle, he has an opportunity to tell his story. And now we'll turn and look at Darius Royster and his journey to his senior year. My name is Darius Roster. I'm from Chesapeake, Virginia. I'm a senior at Deep Sam. Bring just a three and the quarterback oh, back down. Uh, Darius Royster, the tackle for loss machine. Walk on. Came to the program as a walk on and worked himself into the starting lineup. Chesapeake, Virginia native. You end up going to Norfolk State. What drew you there? Basically close to home, so and they recruited me out of high school, so I was planning on trying to walk on there. Man, what was your experience like? at Norfolk State. To be honest, it was kind of terrible, like, cause I, I was basically spending like my whole time there just trying to get on the team. Of course, now you're playing here at North Carolina Central. What was the decision, what was the big motivating factor for you uh, to transfer here? Basically, like one of my high school friends, he went here, so I already knew somebody it's here. Being a walk-on, it's, it's really difficult. What was it like, you know, adjusting to North Carolina Central after trying to adjust at Norfolk State? It just, being a walk-on really like built great character because you you're dealing with adversity every day because you got to beat the odds every day come from being a walk-on become an all-conference player what did it feel like to get that recognition it felt good it felt like it felt like a dream to be honest with you what's it like playing those home games it's crazy like when we was on the uh, goal line stand and the fans just going crazy just you look to the like crowd just so many people out there just it just make you want to make a play who are some of those players that you looked up to uh, that for inspiration or that you've modeled your game after? Ray Lewis, because first of all, he's a man of God, and he just, the passion, like, he loved the game so much, and that's how I am. It's a blessing to have him back. I'm, I'm so happy for what he brings to the team as far as leadership, uh, pass rushing ability. Had a big moment with him, brought you up in front of everybody, and told you that you were on scholarship. What was that moment like for you? It was a big moment, because taught me things that he thought I could do, like be better, a better man and better on the football field too as well. What defines this program? Just relentless. A relentless program, passionate program, like fan base are really just, just love the game. Like my teachers love the game. You come up to people, come up to you around the street and just tell you how much they, they are supportive of us. If there's one thing that if you write a book when this is all over, was one thing that you'd pull out of it about your time here in North Carolina Central? It's just basically how they just gave me an opportunity when nobody else did. So that's something I will always be indebted to this institution for doing that for me. That's Darius Royster, an inside look at his career. You can see the full package of that by visiting North Carolina Central University's YouTube page, NCCU Eagles. YouTube.com slash NCCU Eagles. Halftime, MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. The score, Norfolk State 17, North Carolina Central 7. We'll continue to break down the first half right after this on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. So let's get after it. What would you like the power to do? MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Jonathan Duran and Joshua Stephenson here as Norfolk State leads North Carolina Central 17 to seven at the midway point. This game has been basically in the control of Norfolk State and it's been in the control of their signal caller, Jawan Carter, as he's been leading the way for the Spartan team. Well, Carter has had a host of weapons to utilize, whether it's Johnson, or Raquan Smith in the backfield, or his favorite target today so far with three receptions, Justin Smith with a touchdown of his own. So when you have weapons utilized like that, it makes your job very easy to survey the field and throw the ball to these targets. 10 completions, 17 attempts for Jawan Carter. 
169 yards and one touchdown, plus a long of 53, and it was that one right there that he was able to complete, just like you mentioned, to the wide receiver number three, Justin Smith. And then again, this Herculean effort by Jawan Carter keeps the pass, keeps the play alive, able to get out and sling that one downfield complete toward the one yard line. This is the type of stuff that makes him the reason why he leads the MEAC and so the offense able to utilize his legs to keep the play keep going. He's stepping up in the pocket, throwing floaters up in the air for his receivers to catch it, surveying the field, and that's the reason why the Spartans are up 10 in this game. 17 to seven, Norfolk State leads. You mentioned Justin Smith, the leading beneficiary of Jawan Carter, three catches. For 86 yards, Raekwon Smith, two for 26. But Jawan Carter also on the ground, three carries as well, trying to push the Spartans forward. They lead this game 17 to seven, and we have the second half for you coming up next. This is MEAC Football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. What would you like the power to do? MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. 17-7 is the score here after 30 minutes of play. Jonathan Duran and Joshua Stephenson here at O'Kelly Riddick Stadium in Durham, North Carolina. The Spartans won the coin toss. They elected to kick, and now they will receive to start the second half, and they receive with a lead of 10 points. Well, I would say for the Eagles on this on this uh, upcoming half, you gotta learn how to cut down on turnovers and stop the run. Playing is simple. That's been what's been killing them so far in this game. Spartans will return this kick from about the 20 yard line, and the return man hurdles a man and gets all the way up to about the 36. And that's where NSU will start their second half drive. So the Spartans, they lead this game 17 to seven and Jawan Carter is going back out onto the field after a fantastic first half of play. And the Spartans are gonna try to ride him on the way to victory. Well, he's looking to uh, continue his wrath like he did in the first half. Let's see if the Eagles have learned their lesson and try to counteract the Carter attack. 17, seven the score, Spartans will get the ball first in the second half from the 37 yard line. And they'll go on the quick handoff here for Hewlett. Hewlett trying to turn the corner and he is pushed to the turf at about the 36 Hewlett. yard line. North the Carolina Central in there quickly. Deontay Fair with the hit. What I really like about the Spartans they offense is like the they're play. utilizing different running backs like we stated Second earlier. You have a multitude of runners who run in different ways that kind of puts the pressure a lot on the defense. Second down and 10. Shotgun with two receivers. Carter taking his time, takes the snap. Throws this one very quickly to Mark Ellington. Ellington stiff arms the first man, but Patrick Connor finishes the play. It's now third down. Carter's pass complete to Ellington. Six, six target. Uh, Surprised they have to utilize him more in the red zone. Line. It's kind of easy just to throw the guy in six, six. Third and four. Third down. Dribble pace. Not usually too hurried on the football as they get everybody set. Plenty of time to snap it. Get everybody organized. And now here's Carter looking. Dumps it over the middle. It's incomplete. Intended for to Kendall James asking and pleading for a flag, but he's not going to get it. James looking for a penalty on the play. No pass interference call. He was looking for it. Uh, results in fourth down for the Spartans. So, Norfolk State now will have to punt. 
Brandon Codrington back to return. And out to punt will be Ryan Richter. The Eagles giving the Spartans a little bit of their own medicine. They force North Carolina Central on a multiple three and outs to start. But here's a booming spiral over the head of Codrington. And it'll be touched down to the nine yard line. And that's where the Eagles will start their first drive of the second half. Winning the kicking game, always very important. And a fantastic punt there from Richter. Yeah, unfortunately for the Eagles, they have to start uh, closer to the end zone than they would have expected. Um, so let's see if they can uh, get out of this funk right here and get this offense going. So North Carolina Central takes over at their own nine yard line. They'll spread out four. The tailback <coughs> will be Isaiah Totten. Davius Richard trying to reignite the Eagle offense. And the Eagles will start their first drive with this snap. And Richard, pressure's collapsing, try to throw that one, but just takes the Richard. better part of Valor and takes it down with him. Chris Myers will subtract about six yards Tackle for, for North Carolina Central on the sack for the Spartans. And that'll be another sack for Richard. Uh, unfortunately for the uh, offensive line, not good enough to protect their quarterback. And now Eagle another down. player down, one of the Eagle offensive linemen. That's Robert Mitchell. Athletic training staff out to him, and it's going to turn around and get up and walk off and actually Ladies jog and off gentlemen. under his own power. We're looking for so the America officials' Fitbury. timeout stops very quickly as he America walks off. Fitbury. It's now you second down Wallace. for North Carolina Central Wallace. after a sack there by Chris Myers. That's his sixth sack of the year, seventh tackle for loss. 26 tackles coming into this game for the outside lineman from Laverne, Tennessee. Second down. A long way to go for North Carolina Central. Back to their own six-yard line. Davius Richard looking upfield. Throws this one on the flat. It's caught there in coverage. What a grab on the outside there for Tyler Barnes. Yeah, not only in coverage, but in double coverage areas where you don't want to throw the ball to, but luckily That's his receiver point. wanted him more on that possession. Out now third and short now for North Carolina Central. <coughs> and I'll get everybody third set here. Three. See Ryan McDaniel, he's been targeted quite a few times today for North Carolina Central. McDaniel after that catch up now to six catches in this game. That's a game high. And Richard rolling, looking to pass, trying to get away from the Spartan defenders. Floats this one to EJ Hicks, and there's a lot of room for him. Tries to cross field, following his blockers, gets across midfield, tracked by a Spartan, and finally written to the ground at the 38 yard line and a flag thrown to the end of the play. But EJ Hicks bails out the quarterback Richard and picks up a lot of yards for the home team. I don't know if you noticed it on the last play, Richard signaled to him to keep on going because I'm about to throw it to you that left a wide open lane for him. He's able to pick up a bunch of yards on that play. Great play for the Eagles on that drop. And our referee getting ready to make the call here as they talk things over, our head referee, Robert Fraser, this afternoon. So not just all of that there, but also 15 more yards on there for the penalty. And another look at the play here. If you go over here, Richard's signals keep, tells the Hicks to keep going. Hicks recognizes it, follows his blocks. And just tackle there in the midway point. Good play on that. So now Davius Richard. Throws this one for the end zone, looking for Stevens. That's caught at the back of the end zone. Touchdown, North Carolina Central. Game on. Richard says, I don't throw darts at balloons. I throw balloons at darts. Way to throw the ball into a way that the, sec the secondary couldn't get out of it. And gets the touchdown for the Eagles in the right, right back in this game. That's a 30-plus yard strike for North Carolina Central. And this is back to a one-score game. Yeah, absolutely. You see. Richard surveying the field, recognizes there's a mismatch right there. Shows y'all right there, touchdown for the Eagles. They're only down by four. Extra point on the way, and that is good from Adrian Olivo. The extra point is good. And this is back to a three-point difference between North Carolina Central 
and Norfolk State as we head to a media timeout. That last drive for North Carolina Central, four plays, 90 yards, one minute and 40 seconds. The scoring play, a 23-yard catch to Deshaun Stevens. Closer look at the drive brought to you by North Carolina Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat. Visit them online at nceent.com. You're watching MEAC Football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. What would you like the power to do? MEAC Football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Jonathan Duran alongside Joshua Stephenson. North Carolina Central has made this a one-score game once again. Davius Richard and Deshaun Stevens at the back of the end zone. Well, the Eagles have suddenly woken up offensively, starting to take more chances downfield. Richard being the playmaker that he is and helping this offense uh, reach the end zone now. They're only down by a field goal. So now North Carolina Central ready to kick this one away. It'll be Adrian Olivo to send it off to Tremaine Talbert. Kevin Johnson back there as well. This one will be for Talbert. Talbert going down the far sideline, stutter step, and he'll be driven down before he can get to the 30-yard line. It's so North Carolina Central. Their gunners get the job done. And now the Spartans trying to stretch out the lead once again. Well, for the Eagles standpoint, 10 points doesn't seem like enough. The ball will be placed at the 30 yard right here on his last play, you see Richard throwing the strike to Deshaun Stevens. That helps uh, cut his deficit down to three, but they can still have enough time to get back into to this game. Spartans take over at the 30 yard line, leading by three. Field goal earlier in this contest made by Josh Nardone, the difference. As they go on the ground, they hand this one off to Raekwon Smith, and Smith is gonna be brought down by two red shirts on the sideline, but not before he chews up about five. This is pretty prevalent throughout, throughout the whole game as far as the Spartans go. They've utilized this run game uh, to their benefit, you know, and the Eagles are still trying to figure out how to stop it. Three receivers for the Spartans spread out. And then another handoff here in the backfield. Turn in the corner before getting hit very hard, Raekwon Smith. Smith. North Carolina Central able to plug the gap there and stop that one before it went for even further. But even still, it's now third and short for NSU. Pick up a four. Third and short is something third that they're not very used to. One. Look back at the first half, they had no problem moving the ball downfield. Here we go, Eagles now it seems they have turned the, the title Eagles over. Defense to home. Third and one for the Spartans. Somebody said it was homecoming. Can we get some homecoming? And they're going to go into the pistol set. We haven't seen them in the pistol too often in today's game. And they go out of the pistol into the shotgun. Another handoff for Raekwon Smith. Smith up the middle. Shrugs off two tackles. Still on his feet. That's enough for a Spartan first down. And the pile will push over to about the 49-yard line. Well, it's great to have Raekwon teammates Smith. that are willing to help you out moving you forward the with carry. them so you can get a couple extra yards up. So great effort the on the, the Spartans' line. front line. Brandon, first and so ten. Spartans again, North first and eight. ten from the 49-yard line. And Spartans again just keep rolling along. They're five for ten on third down now in this game. Yeah, and, and even whatever what it takes as far as the throw, as far as the run game, they have done their best job to convert on those third downs. High snap, but they're able to complete the handoff. Kevin Johnson gets back to the original Kevin line Johnson of scrimmage, but no carrier. further. That's the second time so far today that Jawan Carter's okay. had to snag a pass out of the, so he's snag a snap out of the sky, but he able to get the ball down, get the handoff off. So credit to Carter for being composed there in that situation. Well, yeah, well that's just the coaching staff trusting that the players are, know what they're doing now in the field. Uh, sometimes you have to make your own adjustments. Spartans adjust their package. They go from the pistol to the shotgun, and now Carter throws this one very quickly, caught by Justin Smith on the near side, and he's going to be brought down at about the 30-yard line. The tackler, Justin Nicholson, but Norfolk State again getting Please. things done through the air. Quick passes and a lot of yards there. Uh, Smith, one of his uh, reliable Please. targets so far in this game. As you can see, he knew, we all knew where the ball was going to, but I don't think the Eagles Norfolk could State. stop it. Justin Smith is now over 100 yards receiving in this game. That last one went for 20 yards. Four catches for 206 yards. 
for Justin Smith, plus one touchdown. Smith by himself isolated on the near side of the formation. And the Spartans will run that away with Kevin Johnson. Gets to the line, not a lot more there for him. It'll be second down. Uh, Eagles still looking as far as to stop this drive going. Uh, they Kevin put Johnson up a little ball, more of an effort right there on that last play. Put up that big front wall. No gain on the play. But at no gain. Second down. Second and ten. Spartans on this drive, moving very steadily. Picked up 39 yards so far, over five plays. Carter looking towards the near side. That is incomplete, looking for Justin Smith. And they're going to throw a flag here. Smith actually stepped Pass out of bounds for Smith. before receiving the pass or trying to flag receive on it. The field. So it could be a penalty for illegal touching unless they rule that he was forced out of bounds there in coverage. So referee dropped his hat, which of course is what they use to mark when a player goes out of bounds. And our field judge, Tony Vaughn, speaking with the referee, Robert Fraser. So they work on getting onto the same page here. Yeah, well once, uh, in, uh, I'm no referee at any uh, football game. But I know the ones of the fact that once you go out of bounds, you're not eligible to catch the ball. And you clear as you can see in that last replay, uh, Smith foot was definitely out of bounds. So he was that definitely uh, an ineligible receiver. Of course, there is the whole process of reestablishing yourself in bounds. But here's our call. Pass interference, defense number 19. Hold the place to spot the foul. First down. So it will be pass interference on Justin Nicholson. Another look here. So they will say that he was forced out of bounds. So that will give the Spartans an extra 15 yards. And they're up to the 19 yard line inside the red zone. Oliver still pleading his case. Uh, he's pointing down the floor like, hey, this is where the guy's foot was out of bounds. You still give it to him. Spartans looking to take advantage. They go on the ground here, another carry. This time it's Raekwon Smith spun to the turf after a gain Smith, of a couple. The ball carrier. And that's really uh, a tough break as you can clearly Pick see a little bit Second of a struggle between the, the running back coming upfield. So let's see what the Eagles have on this play. Second down and eight for Norfolk State. Under eight minutes to go in the third quarter. Spartans hanging on to a three-point lead. Trying to make it two wins in a row this season and two wins in a row at O'Kelly Riddick Stadium over North Carolina Central as Carter pump fakes once, rolls out the pocket. And he's gonna take this one and run with it and will go out of bounds and they're gonna call a late hit out of bounds here. That's just a tough break. You get the momentum, you collide. The player just wanted to finish the play. Momentum takes him down and they're gonna get him for a late hit out of bounds. Yeah, but the coaches always stress whenever you see a player running out of bounds, do not try to touch him. And the offender for North Carolina Central, number 53, Noah Rainbow Douglas. And that'll earn him a trip to the sideline. And head coach Oliver is heated over that last play. And as soon as the quarterback hit the ground, you saw the entire Spartan bench jump up, asking for the flag, and of course, automatic in that situation. So Norfolk State at the eight yard line, trying to stretch out this lead once again. And motion one receiver, Carter has a tailback, Raekwon Smith in the backfield, but Carter is gonna look for the end zone here. Pressure's coming in, swings it to the end zone, that's gonna go out of play, out of bounds, second down. Throw it away, really had Carter's no other option on that play. Sometimes that's the best effort. You don't want to force Second anything that's really not there. And the Spartans really haven't been forcing too much in this game. A very well-tuned offense. And North Carolina Central, after those last few explosive plays, they're actually averaging 8.2 yards per play to the Spartans, 5.9. But the Spartans still outgaining North Carolina Central 299 to 271. Shotgun with four receivers. Carter will hand this one very quickly. Smith hurdles high and brought down at the one yard line. Elevation 
from Raekwon Smith. Is it the cleats or or maybe is it something else? Because it's got to be the shoes. It's, I think it's got to be. I think it's got to be, be definitely the cleats. Press the triangle button on that one. Hurdle right over. We saw the crowd was with the oohs and the ahs on the play. What a play there by Raekwon Smith, the freshman, five foot nine, going high, on a player down. Once this play is done, 17-14 is the score. The Spartans are trying to add on to their lead. And another look here at the athletic play by the tailback. Leaps and bounds is the best Superman impression. But a media timeout for the injury, so we'll step away. This is MEAC Football on the MEAC Digital Network at ESPN3. I've done this. So let's get after it. What would you like the power to do? MEAC Football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. The Spartans on the field are ready to continue. They move everybody around. Tailback, excuse me, tight end from left to right. They'll hand this one off to Hewlett. Hewlett's going to be stopped short down to the one-yard line. And it's now fourth down for the Spartans. And now what will they do as they knock on the door? Well, for the Eagles, it's easy, a goal line stand. But it's easier said than done. Uh, Spartans on that play made the right decision uh, just a nose shy short of getting that uh, red zone in. The last time North Carolina Central faced a team going for it on the goal line. It stopped them three times. Fourth and two, Delaware State converted on that fade route to tie the game. And now the Spartans are going to go with the keeper for the quarterback, and he is in. Touchdown, Norfolk State. Jawan Carter takes it himself. He calls his own number, and the Spartans now up again by nine. Carter said, move out, everybody else. I got this, and I'm going to take it in for myself. Uh, has a touchdown in the air as far as passing and one on the ground. He's just doing it just on both sides. And Jawan Carter now with two total touchdowns in this game. Strides into the end zone, but a flag thrown once the play was done, and the Spartans look like they're moving backward. Now let's see what our call is from our head referee. Kendall James for Norfolk State, Brian Mills for North Carolina Central. But Jawan Carter, I don't know if it was his call or if it was from Coach Gottrell Scott. Either way, they knew that North Carolina Central was looking very heavily at the tailbacks, and they go opposite way on the read and into the end zone, Jawan Carter. Well, that's the type of things you can do when you have a dual threat, um, when you have a, um, a dual threat quarterback who can beat you with his legs. Uh, Carter shows you once again that uh, he's definitely a player to be dealt with. Josh Nardone looking to kick the extra point. Still waiting on one thing from the referee here. I'm unsure what that is. The referee checking on a spot. Might be listening to something. I'm not entirely sure what the holdup is here. All scoring plays automatically go under review. Juwan Carter walked into the end zone. They made the result of the play. The penalty's offset. I'm really just flummoxed about why we got hung up there, but we do continue now. Nardone to kick the extra point. Waiting on the snap and hold from the Spartans. Both are clean. The holder had to do a little bit of extra work to get the ball down, but the extra point does go through. It's now 24-14 NSU. Last drive, 12 plays, 70 yards, 5 minutes and 38 seconds. Jawan Carter in from one yard. Close look at the drive. Brought to you by North Carolina Eye, Ear, Nose, and Throat. 24-14, Norfolk State leads. You're watching MEAC Football on ESPN3 and the MEAC Digital Network. MEAC Football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Jonathan Duran alongside Joshua Stephenson. 
We highlighted Jawan Carter before this game started. He has walked into the end zone. He has a score on the ground. He has a score through the air. He's accounted for 195 yards passing plus a touchdown, and he has just taken this game into his hands, and the Spartan team leads now by nine. That's why the quarterback position is one of the most important positions on the field. It really dictates everything, and Carter has his hands all over this game offensively, moving the needle for the Spartans. Brandon Codrington returns this one. He collided with his other gunner, makes a couple of moves, but brought down to the 18-yard line, and North Carolina Central will take over there. They had just cut this game down to a three-point game. A pass complete touchdown to Deshaun Stevens in the end zone from Davius mm -hmm. Richard. But now he has to make up that ground all over again. Well, Eagles made a good effort to get the lead down. But what happened was it was some penalties and it was a lack of defensive effort containing Carter. Now they put themselves back in a 10-point hole. Just looked at that last score by number eight. Now it's number 11 for North Carolina Central to take the reins. Eagles start this drive with four receivers inside their own territory. And Davius Richard takes his time, dries his hands, and now gets ready for the snap. Looking upfield, pressure's coming in, and time's up. Ball is loose, and the Spartans pick it up, and they walk into the end zone again. A scoop and score, and the Spartans are on top by an extra touchdown. On top, Spartans have been on top as far as the whole game is going. They sack Richards. Richard loses the ball. Just so happens somebody, a Spartan, happened to be there to pick up the ball. And they are up 30 to 14. This is not good. That's going to be picked up there by Deshaun Dixon. He takes it in for the score. And this Spartan team feeling it right now. Yeah, they're definitely firing on all Sunders defensively, offensively. They are the reason why they have the lead right now in this game. So now 30 to 14 with the extra point pending. That's on the way now from Josh Nardone. Snap and hold, better and clean this time around, and the kick is good. It is now 31-14, is a 17-point lead for the Spartans, their largest lead of the game. And for head coach Trey Oliver, this is a daunting task for him to overcome. How is he gonna rally his team around to handle this deficit and get back in this game? Take a look at what's going on around the MEAC. There's just a couple of weeks left in the season. But another look here at this play from Norfolk State. As Davius Richards sacked in the backfield there by Ricky Thomas Jr. He causes the fumble. And the Spartans able to get the score there from Deshaun Dixon as he takes it into the end zone. As we look at the MEAC scoreboard, everything's falling into place. Bethune Cookman, they have one loss right now. They seem to be in the driver's seat because North Carolina AT defeated by Morgan State 22 16. The Aggies are now 4 2. Bethune Cookman is 4 1, but they trail Delaware State right now 16 6. South Carolina State ahead of Howard 62 14. The Bulldogs will go to 4 2, and all of a sudden, it's going to be a log jam with two lost teams. At North Carolina Central, they're three and two right now. They're trying to stay in the thick of the hunt, but they can only do so with a win. Well, that's the crazy thing about the MEAC. A bunch of teams are in the hunt. A lot of teams are tied, and they're all looking for that one opportunity to, to get ahead. And it's Brandon Codrington returns this one back to the 25-yard line. All season long, what has been talked about after the first loss is that you can win with one loss. You can win this league with two losses. But you have to do it with two losses. North Carolina Central is seeing their opportunity slip away right now. But a flag thrown during the return towards the tail end. We're trying to try to get that sorted out. That's a penalty called against Shamar Baker for pulling a player off the pile. And the Eagles now backed up to their own 10 yard line again. And that was a danger zone as we saw the two DNs for the Spartans combine for a scoop and score. Yeah, uh, Spartans defensively have been added. They've, they've shut them down as far as the run and they've made it very difficult for Richards to make plays for his offense. 
Four receivers for Davius Richard, two on each side. He didn't get a chance to pick from either one of them on that last drive. Takes a snap, looking, throws this one quickly. A low pass. Looks like that is going to be incorrect. To say that one bounced in, it's now second down. Yeah, they got to get some type of life back into this offense. It just seems like as quickly as they cut the deficit down, they make a couple of men or errors, and it brings them back more as far as like down. Another handoff here in the backfield. Totten trying to reverse field, gets a little bit of a seal, turns the corner, and he'll get Time about four. The and there's a late hit out of bounds there against the Spartans. And Isaiah Went Totten will get some extra yardage Flag tacked on onto the, the end of his run. Yeah, we, we've been, yeah, they've been doing that to themselves most of the whole game. So it's nice to know that they finally get overturned on the other way. The referees pick up the flags. So an automatic first down for North Carolina Central is Isaiah Totten. He went one way, got bottled up, and said, you know what, let me try the other side. Yeah, he just clearly just didn't see anything was going to happen there. Luckily, he made something out of nothing. So first and 10 for the Eagles from the 31-yard line. The ball will be placed at the 31-yard line. First and 10. Spartans with four down linemen, just the two linebackers in the box. They'll bring just the pressure of four. Davius Richard is not going to be able to evade it. Chris Myers picks up another sack for this Spartan Richard. team. And the sacks keep going. Jackal Key Ball stat Lawrence. between the two quarterbacks, between Carter and Richard. Richard has been sacked over 15. more than five times in this game so far. But that definitely does play a Number part 26. as far as how well he's going to play. A loss of six yards. It's now second and 16. Under five minutes to go in the third quarter. Four receivers spread out. As Richard again takes the snap, steps up in the pocket, and he's going to run out of time again. Deshaun Dixon holding on for dear life, and they finally stopped the play there. I thought they might have gone for a forward progress stop, but Deshaun Dixon, he lost his helmet, but didn't lose his cool. Sort of a defining play, a, a morale booster for his teammates. His helmet Richard. comes off, and he still is at Back it as far as targeting line. Richard. Look at that. He literally takes his helmet <laughs> right <laughs> off of him, and Dixon line. still does not care. He's still on his prey, which was Richard's on that play. I mean, so honest, honestly, that's a break for North Carolina line. Central. <laughs> that the referees, I guess they didn't see it. They didn't see the replay as well. That is a textbook face mask. It's not It's not a pulling of the face mask. It is a lift of the helmet off of the head. It's now third and long for the Eagles. Davius Richard throws it to EJ Hicks. That pass is low. He brings it in, but his knee's down, Richard and that back. stops the play. It's fourth down. You know how, like, in, like, Scooby-Doo, whenever they catch the bad guy and they take his mask off? Oh, that's how that play was. And after the play, Blank Spartans the add on a few more words, and one sentence too far might give North Carolina Central a fresh first down. And for any struggling offense, you'll take those on any given Sunday. Call from the referee. Turns towards the sideline and addresses us now. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct foul, defense number nine. That is number nine, first unsportsmanlike conduct foul in the contest. 15 yards, automatic first down. And Nigel Chavis. He came through, the Spartans made their point, the and Nigel Chavis said, oh, and one more thing, and the referee said, no, 15 yards. Yeah, uh, that's been the tale of these two teams, uh, a list of unsportsmanlike conducts, late hits. Uh, these teams really don't like each other from what I'm getting. And the Spartans are going to call a timeout here. I think Coach Scott is going to try to cool the tempers of his team. Yeah, absolutely. You can't really have that. Once you have players out here who are just trying to fulfill their hidden agendas, I think they lose focus of the key game it is to win and not get caught up in the whole passion of the game. And the Spartans are going to head back home once this game is done before going to their next destination. And everybody else within the MEAC, they're going to be heading towards Norfolk in March as well. Tickets for the 2020 MEAC basketball tournament, March 10th to the 14th at Norfolk Scope Arena in Norfolk, Virginia, are now on sale at MEAC member institution ticket offices, Ticketmaster outlets, and the MEAC office by calling 757-951-2055. Visit MEACHoops.com for more information. 
the MEAC tournament is always a great week of action. The city of Norfolk does a great job hosting the event, and I'm looking forward to heading back this year as Isaiah Totten stumbles in the backfield trying to get away from the defense, but a crashing wave of Spartans. Kyron Speller finishes the play, and it's now second down after a loss. Totten trying to look for answers as far as where to go. He had no blockers around him, so he had to do the best he could, the but the Spartan Second defense uh, got to him first. Second and ten. Four receivers spread out. And Davius Richard will delay the snap count. And will turn now to the near side. When you see these offenses run like this, what do you prefer? Do you prefer the, the hurry up or do you like to slow things down? Well, if I'm in the lead, uh, uh, Jonathan, I'm going with the hurry of, I'm trying to make sure that they don't have no time to breathe. Davius Richard with just enough time to breathe in the pocket, connects that one to Trevion Pratt. Pratt with a nice play. Pointed at this guy, so hey man, you, you messed up on that last play, I'm coming to get you. So you're more, you're more of a fan of the hurry up offense. Oh yeah, absolutely, you gotta keep the defense um, unrested, unsettled, so that you don't, so that you hit them at any time. Another quick pass on the outside, just missing Pratt on the out routes. Now Richard second down. Personally for second myself, down. I like to slow things down a little bit. You don't have the ball. <laughs> <laughs> just hold on to it for as long as possible. Yeah, well, I come from a place where we run and gun, and we don't give the defense no time to breathe. So we're going to be firing on every single down. Gulf Coast offense, huh? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. Another handoff in the backfield. Isaiah Totten takes the contact, keeps going, and he's going to gain about seven yards there. Totten took a big hit on that first contact. Nigel Chavis making the contact. Isaiah but Kyron Tottenham Speller down after the play over yeah, as well. And he looks like he needs line. some attention. Where it'll be third and five. Now the Spartans down. An injured player is on the field. So media, excuse me, an official's timeout right now. Kyron Speller has done a lot of damage for NSU in this game. The Richard Sr. from Virginia Beach. Speller so far in this contest, just the two tackles, but he's been a big factor of what's been happening up front for the Spartan team coming into this game. 25 tackles, one and a half for a loss plus half a sack. So you take another look here. Speller just gets tied up there at the end of the play. It's hard to see where the injury was there. He was holding on to his arm and might have gotten rolled up there underneath the tackle. Yeah, and you hate to see it from one of your premier uh, defensive players on, on your roster. You're just hopeful that the next guy up can come back and do the same job. He's up and walking off the field under his own power, joined by his inside lineman teammate, Tavian Blackwell, as he gives him some words of encouragement as he walks off. But both teams now back on the field, ready to continue. But time running short on North Carolina Central. They trail by 17, and a door opened up for them as North Carolina a and got shocked by Morgan State, but that door closing very quickly unless North Carolina Central can get this win. And movement before the snap is going to go against North Carolina Central, the right guard off a step early. And I think he knew it as soon as the play uh, was whistled dead. You can see right here on this last play, he realizes, oh, I made a mistake. And as soon as he got across, and touch the D lineman across from him. Of course, it's the automatic five yards. Now third and 10 for North Carolina Central. Just a little bit further to go. Four options for Davius Richard. Looks for them now. That pass is incomplete. And the Eagles looking for a pass interference call, but Ryan McDaniel, the intended target. And he has that one broken up. And it's now fourth down. My head coach um, from back home, my wide receiver head coach, said if the ball hits your hands, you had an opportunity to, to catch it. It's unfortunate that the Eagles couldn't make it count right there. And North Carolina Central feeling the heat, and they look like they're going to go for it here on fourth down as they desperately need to put points on the board. The Eagles 5 for 18 on fourth down this season. 
and they have 10 yards to gain. They're gonna go for it here. Richard in the pocket, pressure's coming, tries to elude it, and he will not. Norfolk State shuts the door. In there, Chris Myers and Deshaun Dixon, and they force the Eagles to turn it over on them. Another sack, another sack, another sack. And that has been a repeating sound I've been saying for the past couple plays. The Spartan defense really getting into uh, Davis in terms of the pocket collapsing around him. And this is another unfortunate uh, third and out for the Eagles. So far in this game, Norfolk State has been in the backfield seven times. Davis Richard has been reached seven times in this game. Jawan Carter just once. Yeah, unfortunately. And of course, one of those led to six points as they hand this one off in the backfield. Tailback going backwards, but he's able to avoid the tacklers. All the same, Kevin Johnson, he's gonna lose a couple Kevin of yards Johnson here. Ball, now second down. As we make our way towards the final frame. A loss of five on the play. The second and 15. You know, I would like to see more as From far the as defensive for the Eagles scoring on touchdowns. They're one of the best in the MEAC as far as converting uh, interceptions and fumble recoveries into points. Uh, that really needs to be a key emphasis uh, as the third quarter draws to a close. Just 75 seconds left here in the third frame. Four receivers as Jawan Carter goes on a quick drop. Pass complete to Mark Ellington. And Ellington is going to take a couple of tacklers for a ride with him. They'll get about five or six. It's now third down. Under a minute to go in the third. 6'6 six, six is pretty uh, tall in my opinion. Uh, as you can see, it's like he carried them like, like little kids on the way to the store or something on that last play. 6'6 six, six is tall in any nine. measurement that you want to <laughs> look at, man. That was my dream high growing up. <laughs> now third and nine. I always wanted to be taller myself. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But I was a track athlete, so it didn't matter. You would have been a great pole vaulter. You were 6'6". Six, six. Oh, man, I always wanted to fly. Mm -hmm. I just became a long jumper instead. Oh, okay. 39, Carter looking, stays behind the line, passes incomplete. Breaking that one up at the last second for North Carolina Central, Brian Mills, Passing now fourth it. down. Mills couldn't get a hand on it, but he did the next best thing and distract fourth the receiver nine. into him not being able to receive that ball in there on that play. Uh, great play by Mills uh, defensively. So the Spartans now will punt. Back to return, Brandon Cotterington made something happen in the clutch, and you know North Carolina Central is probably hoping for him to do the same thing here. Has an opportunity, the punt's gonna get to him quickly. He's gonna turn, get out of the first tackle, but he won't actually. Brought down at the 21 yard line. The gunner for the Spartans the making the tackle, number 44, Treshawn Smith. The 21 yard line. Yeah, if the Eagles have anything underneath their sleeve and they're holding it for the fourth quarter, then I guess we have nothing to worry about. But to any other uh, regular coach, being down 31 to 14 with one more quarter left to go to cover the deficit is some really big shoes to fill. You really just got to break it up to, we just got to get one score, okay? Let's go get another score and just one by one by one. Sure, absolutely. But uh, easier said than done, as most will say. 13 seconds left in the third quarter. North Carolina Central is going to go to a very tight pistol set. He'll turn and hand it off to the tailback, and he has nowhere to go. All the white shirts will bring him down in the backfield. Jordan Freeman on the carry, but stopped short there by number 90, Remy Feltis. Jordan Freeman. And this has been a, a recurring factor here throughout the whole game. And that's going to be the end of the third quarter, 31 to 14. Title hopes on the line for North Carolina Central in these last 15 minutes of play. You're watching MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Jonathan Duran and Joshua Stephenson here from O'Kelly Riddick Stadium, North Carolina Central University trying to keep their title hopes alive, but they need to make up a 17-point deficit 
in these last 15 minutes. Davius Richard, a quick strike. That one caught by Ryan McDaniel, trying to push the pile up to the first down marker. Looks McDaniel. like it's gonna be close here. See that what you do here on this play? You get the first pass set up, boom. You now, you get the drive moving. Next line. thing you know, you keep that the drive going. Seven, you have to do what you have to do, and score as fast first as you down. can, make, and have the least amount of turnovers as you can to get back in this game. So the Eagles do get the first down on that completion. Try to keep the momentum rolling along. Davius Richard in the pocket again. Steps out of it, and he has room to run. He's going to take that block outside, throws a stiff arm, and keeps going forward. Tyler Barnes able to throw him a block, and that's good for at least 12 yards and another eagle first down. And, and what's crazy is the coaching staff is actually encouraging him to run. If you see nothing, pick up the ball and, let, and run, as you saw right here. You look at this run from Davius Richard, but what I really want to point out was Tyler Barnes basically just boxing his man out to avoid the hole. Okay, he See, one play here, boom. And then there, another big play. This is the type of stuff that's going to hurry up and get the team energized and ready to score. Up to the 45 in Spartan territory. They'll go on the ground, they'll play action. That pass is incomplete, looking for Tyler Barnes. And that's gonna be the first stopping play for North Carolina Central on this drive after three consecutive big plays. Uh, yeah, that was uh, almost one that could have went in. Uh, another way, they're showing the uh, the other runner, the running play right here, a big hit on there on Totten right now on the play. But the Eagles are finally taking more chances down downfield. Down Isaiah Totten right through the tackles up the middle. Now second and ten for the Eagles. They'll go back to Totten. Totten waits, surges through, takes a hit, but gets about three. It's now third and seven. Really trying to utilize the running game here. Totten pretty Totten, pedestrian numbers so far. They're still trying to keep even going. It out to the definitely not line. up to where he's been over his Will last few years. As he earned MIAC Rookie of the Year honors and has been a first team all MIAC selection all throughout his career, but just hasn't really quite gotten off the mark in this season. Staying in the backfield, he's on the left hip of the quarterback. It's now third and seven as Davius Richard looks upfield. Richard's pass is complete to Deshaun Stevens, and that's another first down for North Carolina Central. Let's get the final reliable targets downfield who's going to help you out and keep this drive going. Deshaun, uh, definitely one of them. Complete the Stevens. One of the many receptions he has today. Deshaun Stevens vaults into the book, his third catch of the day. Ryan McDaniel has a game high six. EJ Hicks has a game high 126 yards. Davius Richard in the pocket. Takes this one down. He's got to run with it. Gets away from the lineman, and now will skitter out of bounds at about the 27. The See, he did a two uh, plays here, right here. First, he ran out of bounds just to stop the clock going. And second, he saw nothing he on the play as far as passing. And he took line. the ball and ran it up to keep his drive going. Pick up a four. Looks like somebody Pick dropped something six. on the field. Four yards given to North Carolina Central. Pop pass here for Ryan McDaniel. McDaniel looking for blocks, goes up the seam, and he might have enough for another first down. They're going to mark him down at the 22. That's where the Ryan marker McDaniel is, and that is a first down for North Carolina Central. A little sw switch of rule, a little roundabout run out there for McDaniel here on the play. Results in the first down for the Eagles. And now Davius Richard looking for the end zone on the wheel route, just a little bit too far ahead of his receiver. That one intended for Ryan McDaniel, incomplete second down. Richard's McDaniel almost incomplete. had it. Try to reach out with his arm to see if he could snag it with one hand. Uh, a little too much separation from the hand and the ball there. McDaniel, seven catches in this game. North Carolina Central set very quickly once again. And they're going to look to the sideline and get the new play call. The Eagles finding it imperative to get into the end zone here in this fourth quarter, down by 17 as Richard rolls. And he's going to take a little bit too long to throw that one as he is absolutely dropped in the backfield. 
Kyron Speller with the tackle Spiller. and the sack. Speller did not stop until he had Richard Bowman on the ground. Showed a little bit of strength after the play was over. Let him know that, Bowman hey, man, I got you that time. And that is the eighth sack for this Norfolk State defense. Third and a long way to go. Third and 15, the line to gain is the 12. And the Eagles really outside of comfortable field goal range as well. Stavius Richard is able to get that one out. He gets to Isaiah Totten. Totten is able to get to about the 16 yard line. That's not enough for the first down, Isaiah but into Totten. field goal range. Yeah, and, and honestly, you have to just go for it for the field goal. Just the at least get some points on the board and see if you can get your defense uh, to help you out. And well, coach says, okay, I receive your ideas, but we're going to go for it here. See, you know what's crazy? When I say something, they do the opposite. You know? Now, fourth and a mid to gain for the Eagles. Davis Richard on the out route. That pass broken up, nearly intercepted, but it falls incomplete. The Eagles turn it over, and they remain down by 17. Down. Try to go for the check down or around the sidelines, but didn't seem to happen for the Eagles on that play. 31-14 is the score. Ten and a half minutes remaining in regulation. You're watching MEAC Football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. MEAC Football on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Jonathan Duran and Joshua Stephenson here at O'Kelly Riddick Stadium. You see the marching sound machine entertaining the crowd. It's homecoming for North Carolina Central. But the Spartans trying to rain on the parade for the Eagles. They're up 31-14. Fourth quarter, and he'll start this drive with a handoff for Gerald Hewlett Jr. And Hewlett takes it for his 12th carry of the game. He has 42 yards up to that Johnson, carry. You said rain up. on their parade, more like thunder. Since the beginning the of the game, the Spartans have done a great job Second of not of letting the Eagles feel From comfortable as far as offensively line. and keeping the defense on the field for long periods of time. Uh, that has been the, the, the formula for their success so far in this game. When I correct myself, that was Kevin Johnson on that last carry. Talking about the parade, it was actually pretty nice this morning. We opened up our broadcast. You saw the Eagles Chancellor, Dr. Johnson O. Akinyele, able to start the parade with a ribbon cutting. And now here's a counter and a handoff for Kevin Johnson as he stutter steps and follows his blockers all the way up to the 32-yard line, and another flag thrown after the play is done. Uh, that's what it seems to be uh, prevalent throughout the whole game. Flag play ends flag. Play ends flag. Uh, both teams just really just can't say discipline. Referees getting together, and with all the unsportsmanlike conduct penalties that have been dished out in this game, you got to worry about some players starting to get ejected if they are caught for multiple infractions. Well, there definitely was the, the case where uh, Pratt had the head-on collision um, off, of, off of the return. And there is no foul for unsportsmanlike contact. So the carry will go for the yardage that was originally marked, and it's now first and 10 for the Spartans all the way up at the 31. And the Spartans still moving on the ground. It picked up 122 yards on the ground. North Carolina Central with just 18 in this contest. That, Two digits. That is the recipe for disaster. And off here for Kevin Johnson. Johnson swims his way across the line as he's able to stretch out after the initial hit by Deontay Johnson Fair for North Carolina area. Central. A pick but up a 122 one. to 18 Second on the ground. Nine. See, that puts a from the 31 yard line. line imaginable amount of pressure on the quarterback to not only get the passing game going, but just the offense. You can't get the run game going. That puts a whole lot of pressure on your quarterback. And to Davis Richards' credit, he has completed 23 passes for 318 yards. Has two scores, but he has been sacked eight times today. Second down and nine. The Spartans it will Go on the play action. Jawan Carter slings a dart caught by the tight end, and he takes the tacklers up to about the 50-yard line. There on the completion, Sean McFarland, the junior tight end from Selden, New York. Carter signaling to the rest of his teammates 
first down, and we're going to continue the show that I've been running the whole time. Rolls out, evades a couple of tacklers, finds a tight end, and a nice big chunk of yards on that play. Spartans continue to take their time, set up on this near side hash mark right at the 50-yard line. And the Spartans actually giving North Carolina Central a dose of their own medicine. The Eagles went up to Dick Price Stadium last year and recorded a 36-6 win over the Spartans. And Joshua, I want you to guess on when that was. That was last year. Right, and last year for Norfolk State. It was their homecoming. It was their homecoming. Flags and the Spartans the probably remembering what happened last year and saying, you know what, we're going to bring this right back to you. Flags thrown right after the play was done. Kevin Johnson on the last carry brought down in the backfield. Our referee, Robert Fraser, getting after ready to play, make the call. Time around, charge to Jesse Malit. See the carry here from Johnson. Play ends. The ball will be placed at the 30. And Jesse Malit is tied up there It'll be first and 10. with the offensive line. Norfolk and of course, State. they never see the initiation, they see the finish. Oh, but that's why we have um, instant replay of the show. What exactly happened? Oh, oh, uh, face mask. Oh, man, you definitely can't do that. Uh, that's definitely going to result <laughs> in another uh, sports line conduct penalty. First and 10 for the Spartans <laughs> after the penalty. They're at the 38 yard line. Handoff now for Hewlett. Hewlett pushes his way forward. And this Spartan offensive line just opening doors left and right for the tailbacks. Yeah, they've been definitely doing their job as far as pulling Hewlett, and giving equal opportunities carrier. for the running back and, and the quarterback to he run to and have daylight towards the end zone. Norfolk State keeping the ball on the ground. There's only seven minutes left in regulation. North Carolina Central running out of time. Yeah, and this one, uh, the Eagles are at the mercy of the Spartans as far as their time management, slowly letting the clock windle down before each play. Ten seconds left to snap it, and now Jawan Carter is going to ask for the offensive line to get set. They all lower into place, and... Carter takes the next snap, and he's going to look to pass. Swings it up quickly on the outside to Hewlett. Hewlett smartly stays in bounds. He steps across the marker and pass waits for the Hewlett. defensive de excuse me, for the defensive back to come up and hit him. Yeah, and also we see we have another flag on the field. Number flag 70 on the field. Show, showcasing his acting skills. That's Justin Red that's down after the play over. And the referees coming in. It looks like it's going to be another penalty, more than likely against North Carolina Central. Yeah, unfortunately, I think on Sportsline Conda has been the lead leader as far as penalties in this game. After the play, on Sportsline Conda, defense number 92, fighting. Number 92 is disqualified. On Sportsline Conda, foul, offense number 70, fighting. Number 70 is disqualified. So two players disqualified. Wow. Yeah. Two disqualifications. I think it's come to a point where the referees have really just had enough yeah. of what's been happening. And so, you know what, we're just going to put a stop to it. You're out, you're out. Well, I guess they don't want to make it into some type of brawl later on down the field to where they can't even finish the game. Uh, referees definitely sh showing everybody, hey, listen, man, I have the power to keep you in this game or keep you out. So now third and short, offsetting penalties. It is third and one. And Spartans looking the across the field, line. getting what the next play is supposed to be, and now they'll scramble into place with just five seconds to snap the ball. And the tight end, McFarland, still not sure, and they're not going to get set. They just do get that off in time. And they'll hand that one off for the tailback, I believe. Hewlett, I think Carter actually kept that one. Carter. Either way, yeah, the it's a keeper carrier. for Carter. It's a first down for the Spartans. And, you know, and as, as far as uh, for Latrell well, Scott, uh, head coach for North the Spartans, State. now you're in kill the clock mode where you slowly inch up and get ready for a play. You're predominantly, predominantly good, just going to run the ball, not going to give the Eagles any life as far as passing, though. So they're going to continue with the run game. And the Spartans, the way they're going, 
they look like they might be able to actually hold on to this ball until this game is over. Just five and a half minutes to go. This draft for Norfolk State started five minutes ago. Jawan Carter's gonna pull this one on the read and he'll be wrapped up on a shoestring tackle in the backfield. There for the tackle was Steven Stokes. As college football celebrates its 150th year, the MIAC is proud to document and showcase some of the legendary coaches throughout the history of black college football. Highlighting such greats as Willie Jeffries, Bill Hayes, Billy Joe, Rod Broadway, Marino the Godfather Kasem, and others. Visit MIACsports.com and the MIAC's YouTube channel to watch these interviews. A lot of coaching legends have come through the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference and in black college football in general. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, that's really a great show uh, as far as the era. We have legends in this conference as well. Looking for the end zone to put this game to an end. That is caught right at the back. Touchdown, Norfolk State. Mark Ellington sends this game to its conclusion with an exclamation point. Carter, Carter nail, man. heart, coffin. Throws a dart oh, to the end zone to silence the crowd Into here. No Kelly Riddick Stadium. State and the Spartans exchanging homecoming pleasantries like North Carolina Central did. So we're going to give you this gift right back. And consecutive win over North Carolina Central here. The last time they won, they stopped an 11 game home winning streak and an 18 game streak against MIAC opponents for North Carolina Central. Spartans looking like they're going to start a two game win streak and North Carolina Central's title hopes look like they have come to an end. Well, this extra point is good. is good from Josh Nardone. Well, for the Spartans, uh, the, one of the best things you can do is try to win 24, on the road. The and not only win on the road, State on oh, top. but also win during someone else's homecoming. That's even worse. 38 to 14 is your score. 424 to go here in regulation. You're watching MIAC football on the MIAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Grand finale. <laughs> <laughs> MIAC football on the MIAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Jonathan Duran alongside Joshua Stephenson. 38 to 14 is the score, and the Spartans looking like they have just tied this game up and sent it on the way into the history books. As they're up now by 24. They'll kick this one off now. Here's Brandon Codrington looking to return. Looking for some blocks, and it'll be brought down to the 28-yard line. Norfolk State went down the field and did a lot of work. You take a look at this last look. Jawan Carter from 26 yards out to Mark Ellington in the back of the end zone, and that is the difference maker. 38-14 Spartan Sweep. You're watching MIAC Football on the MIAC Digital Network and ESPN3. Check this out. Oh, okay. Like that. Grand finale. Oh! I like that, man. That's good. Looking upfield, here is another handoff for Collier. Collier will turn the corner. And it looks like North Carolina Central is going to run this one out here. Collier. 
probably is going to get a couple more uh, field timer here in these last couple plays. Second and four. Uh, them, maybe they should probably take a whole lot of some more shots downfield. You might as well. The game's already about to come to an end. There is a shot downfield. That one caught and dancing the sideline. Number 83, Barry Campbell, picks up the first down for North Carolina Central. Pass complete to Campbell. Good job. They got a chance to kill the clock, so gives them some little bit of time to work the with. Yard line. I'll say that he that will stay in bounds, rather. Right, right, goes down. out on his own volition. So, <coughs> excuse me. Clock continues to roll. Davius Richard throws his pass incomplete off the hands of the tailback. Collier is now second down. Now, that would have been the last balloon in the mix as far as the air out all the excitement in this game. Intended. But that would have been an interception. I think people would just be leaving right now. The Eagles hold on to the ball. Another handoff for Collier. Collier will surge for about seven yards. Collier, the ball it's now third up. down. Making our way towards our conclusion, Josh, you look at these two teams, what really was the difference for the Spartans to get out in what front and get this and win? Uh, Carter. <laughs> but, but not just Carter, but they had um, their defensive front four as far as Dixon goes, going at it as far as um, the quarterbacks and Colossus in the pocket. Uh, their run game was spectacular with their host of many running backs that can step in, um, come behind center, and also uh, make plays or that. So. Eagle, uh, the Spartans have everything going for him. Fourth and one, Eagles trying to convert. They'll get it out to EJ Hicks. Hicks across the sticks. First down for North Carolina Central. They convert on fourth down, but under two minutes to go now in regulation, and it looks like North Carolina Central will leave empty-handed on homecoming for the first time in five years. Uh, Spartans came into this game with a little bit of motivation uh, to get this win down. They definitely took care of business here in Durham. Another snap for the Eagles. A handoff here for Collier. Collier shakes outside, points for a block, pushes EJ Hicks forward, and now will skip out of bounds at about the 12. And how's that for a run from Mookie Collier? That's a great run from Mookie Collier. You see him pointing, letting his blockers know, hey, man, pick up on that guy. He's trying to score here. So the Eagles have a chance to get into the end zone before this game is done. And Davius Richards is going to try to sling it there. Instead, no, he'll go on the handoff here. Collier, Collier is not going to be able to escape the grasp of the Spartans this time around. There for the tackle for NSU, number 50, Matt Hodges. Uh, Eagles have to probably after this game look back to the drawing board Second and, ten. and see if they can uh, squeeze out these next two victories left on the schedule. 85 seconds remaining in regulation. Eagles with four receivers inside the red zone trying to get one more score. Is a pass to the corner, and that one caught. And is it caught in bounds? It is. Deshaun Stevens gets a second touchdown. What a grab at the back of the end zone. Yeah, way to stay with it as far as concentration goes. Look underneath the shoulder and saw the ball, caught it. Great play for Deshaun Stevens, though. And for Deshaun Stevens, it's a bittersweet moment for him as he runs down and makes a great grab at the back of the end zone. Deshaun Stevens today now has two receiving touchdowns as he plays his final homecoming in his home city. A Durham native, went to Hillside High School, and now has two touchdowns on homecoming here in Durham. But unfortunately, it looks like he's going to be on the wrong side of the score. Yeah, unfortunately, sometimes uh, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Uh, you can have the, one of the best uh, games of your life, but you only get that win. It feels a little bittersweet. So Delaware State, they pick up a win over Bethune-Cookman as well. As we take another look here, Deshaun Stevens pulls this one in as he tight ropes the backside of the end zone. But for North Carolina Central, all these teams now with two losses, but now the Eagles need them to take one more loss if they really want to stay in the title hunt. But let's take a closer look at that last drive for North Carolina Central as they got into the end zone. Goes 11 plays, 71 yards, three minutes and eight seconds. Scoring play, a 14 yard pass from Davius Richard to Deshaun Stevens. Closer look of that drive brought to you by North Carolina Eye, Ear, Nose and Throat. Visit them online at nceent.com. The Eagles going all out. They're going to try for the onside kick here. 
Adrian Olivo checks his skies and will try to bounce this one just right. Now bounce high into the air. The Eagles have a shot at it, and they're going to get on top of it at the 40-yard line. So this game not done yet. Yeah, you might as well go with it. Why not go with the onside kick? Central. You got a minute, seven left Recovers to go. Pull the out all, all the stops and bells in order for you to get another opportunity for you to score. So touchdown onside. Okay. And now touchdown onside again. <laughs> if okay. North Carolina Central wants to continue in this mix, but you look at that, the kicking team gets the job done, diving on top of that to recover it, Trayvon Wallace. So the Eagles have 17 points to go, 38-21 the score. Davius Richard will have four receivers to choose from. Score here becomes a 10-point game, and of course you have to repeat the process. Wash, rinse. Score, onside, score, onside. Yes, yes. exactly. Easy. Davius Richard swings this one, incomplete, looking for Stevens again. Sails everybody, incomplete, now second down. Richard's pass, incomplete. Well, you got about seven seconds on each second play down. in order for a play to develop, so they have a couple more opportunities, but they have to make it count now before it gets to single digits. Eagles still with four receivers and Spartans trying to prevent another score. Stavius Richard looks upfield, steps through the pocket, rolling, looks to throw, he's gonna take it down and run with it now, and will juke out of bounds. Richard just on the being corner chased keeper. there by Nigel Chavis and helped there by Tavian Blackwell. Now third down, 54 seconds left in this contest. Be at the 43 uh, yard line. For this, um, the play has stopped and ran out of bounds. It might be third and eight. Vertical. It might just heed the ball of field. You really have no other choice at this point. Third and eight for North Carolina Central. Davius Richard plus Looks up field with the next snap. Throws it complete to Trevion Pratt. Two feet down. And that's Richard enough for the first down. Complete and to Pratt. Great awareness by Pratt there. Good possession catch in Northern. Having the ball is placed field at the awareness and know that yeah, I'm still in bounds now. I'm going to go out of bounds and we clear this clock. First down. Another look here is see Davius Richard pinpoint his receiver and Trevion Pratt goes into the air and brings it down, puts two feet in bounds. Richard looking upfield again, steps up into the pocket, swings this one incomplete. Looking for Collier, and Collier got undercut in midair, and he took a spill. Oh, uh. man. Uh, hard play on there right here. Really, you saw the impact as soon as he got the ball and he touched his hands. Um, that's incomplete. how it be sometimes in, in the game of football. And Collier went up trying to bring that one in. Got spun around and then took a hit to the hip, and that cartwheeled him in midair. So he leaves the game. Isaiah Totten in for him now. Yes. Richard, again, passes over the middle, caught by E.J. Hicks. Hicks thrown out of the first tackle. He might be able to get out of bounds here, and he does, all the way up at the sticks as well. You got to finish your hits, and E.J. E. Hicks, Hicks fought his way through. Miraculously on that play, Hicks, you thought that after he got wrapped up and tossed, you thought the play was over. He, he still he kept his balance to and the 30, uh, able to get to the sticks. Well, it'll be first and 10, Eagle. Got a look here at E.J. Hicks. Brings that one in. Just gets spun out of the tackle and just keeps going with it and gets out of bounds. So North Carolina Central snaps it again. Richard rolls out the pocket one more time. Looking downfield, he's gonna tuck it and run, and skips out at the 32. Richard. Saw that there was nothing there on that play, down. decided just to keep the ball. You really wanted, you can tell just by the body line. language, you really wanted a, uh, a receiver to be open. Uh, didn't want to end the game with Well, it'll be second and five. Second and five now. Just 25 seconds left here in regulation. Spartans leading 38-21. Richard ready for the next snap. Slings this one outside. Caught on the out right there by Barry Campbell. He goes out of bounds inside the red zone. 
Yeah, this would have been great, uh, I would say, at the Bridges end of the first complete. quarter, end of the second quarter, end of the third, but definitely not at the end of the fourth when uh, you know that you really have nothing else left to do. By. We'll be first and ten. Oh, look at this. Eagle. Snare by Barry Campbell. Great route ran right there. Absolutely. Him and, and the quarterback was on point as far as communication and timing. All that stuff really matters to, to the development of that play. At the 18-yard line, Davius Richard looking, throws it over the middle, caught by Isaiah Totten. Totten brought down inbounds. And with 10 seconds left, that looks like that'll be the final play of this game. 38-21, Norfolk State comes to town and they ruin North Carolina Central's homecoming. Josh, your final thoughts on today's game. Uh, really, uh, the Eagles have themselves to blame. Uh, they wasn't really wasn't disciplined as far as penalties go. Uh, the referees kept calling out uh, different late hits and uh, player, you know, as far as a. Uh, distractions as far as not being able to be focused on the field but the defense didn't really do a good job of uh, you know containing the run uh, the Eagles have to look at on um, the rest of the schedule as far as wins so the Spartans have now won two in a row and they're now three and three in league play North Carolina Central three and three in league play as well as they fall 38 to 21 for Joshua Stephenson I'm Jonathan Dern saying so long from O'Kelly Reddick Stadium thank you for watching the MEAC digital network on ESPN3 all games airing on the ESPN networks are streaming live and archives on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. For those of you listening locally, stay tuned for our post-game report presented by True Pack, excuse me, by Kimberly Williams, Right Time Realty. 38-21, your final score. You saw it all right here on the MEAC Digital Network and ESPN3. This is North Carolina Central Football on the NCCU Sports Network.